Normally, we uh, we have a lot of banter up top. It's tough to do banter when you have a guest, though. And right? this is it? And no, this, it's not. And this is we not. We were doing banter last night, and he was calling us out for being podcast banter guys. This isn't just a guest. <laughs> we have a special guest, like a very special guest. <laughs> What's that? Holly, what's that? Hollywood royalty, uh, some would exciting. say. Who is it? Ooh, <laughs> that's exciting. I got to be honest. In 2024, hearing Hollywood royalty frightens me a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right? We, we, like, we, it's we, a little stressful. We, we, we like, talked about what they do. We I'm talked about how he's going to get canceled. I'm in red Hollywood, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ray believes in Pizzagate, by the way. What? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pita Gate. Yeah. It's a new thing. It was next door. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a hummus pocket situation and it was in the attic not the basement yep. ray runs in with guns it's just all peter's oh no yeah yeah <laughs> empty your pockets oh. there's something there there's something there Gross. work with that Gross. Lamb. Oh. hello and welcome to another episode of fun bearable i am brad roar my name is Ray Harrington, the biggest man of the podcast, sitting next to the smallest man of the podcast, and I'm closer to the camera. This is a nightmare for me. And I'm Chuck. I framed it so funny, Staten. <laughs> and we are joined by documentarian, raconteur, all-around good guy, Sean Colon. I don't know if very many of those things are true. <laughs> I think a couple of them. Oh, you're Wait, always, hold on. You're always no. talking about rack and touring. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we go. Oh, for three. Okay. Am I a good guy? Can I be honest? I don't know what a rack and tour is. Neither do I. Who does like, they're like, I think of racketeering. Yeah, oh, that's like that. the, I thought a raconteur like, is more of like, well, there's the band, the raconteurs. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like he's like exactly. a guy that goes around and plays songs. That's a troubadour. Troubadour. Yeah. 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 Wow. Not as cool of a name. The troubadours. Well, they have the. I like it. Well, well, so what's well, a raconteur? Yeah. A raconteur is like a, isn't it, isn't it similar to a rake? Oh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> like it's a rake? A, like a, like a, it's what you contour. No, not a rake. Uh, okay. No, like, like a, it's you know, like a, a like gentleman. A, like a smooth gentleman. Yeah, 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 yeah. A raconteur. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I didn't a know it was a raconteur. A worldly gentleman? <laughs> I don't think. Oh, you're not a raconteur. Yeah. No, oh, I no. think so. What's, no, what's no. the worldly? opposite? Worldly? What's the opposite of worldly? Yeah. yeah. I've been into two other countries this year. Okay. <laughs> Canada, come on, that's a that's a half. That counts as a half. Okay, here is Rack and what tour. it Sean says Cologne. according to the dictionary. All right. Oh, okay. A person who tells anecdotes in a skillful and amusing way. Oh, nailed oh, it! Oh, you were oh, right about to me. Yeah, yeah. I nailed wow. it. Yeah. Wow. Although we weren't very skillful no. on figuring out what it was. <laughs> yeah. This episode is what if Google didn't exist? Yes. Yes. We're all just like. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a guy with a big hat. <laughs> I think if he has a big hat, he's a, he's a racket and tubador. No, no, I don't want to. What's a racket? What's racketeering? That's Ra- a- racketeering <laughs> is a very different situation. Are you sure? Yeah, that has to do with gambling, right? Yeah, racketeering is. Uh, I believe it's uh, you're you're creating some sort of pay structure flow. Uh, f- oh, oh gosh, there's a because there's a I'm there's sure. a flow <laughs> of income. Yeah, I your questions. You know what's so you know what's so funny? Like you don't know, but then you ask us, and we're like, uh, and I'm, then yeah, we I, look I, stupid. I, 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 <laughs> like in my mind, it's running like an illegal, an yeah. unlicensed gambling ring. But right, right. I, I I was wrong on rack and tour. I could be wrong no, on racketeering. You were right about rack and tour, right? You were close. I was right about you being a rack and tour, but it wasn't what I. Yeah, like, yeah. I was just saying you were a cool yeah. dude. I didn't know you were skilled. <laughs> story. It is funny to be like I'm like. What's a racketeer? What's racketeering? And Brad's like, this guy. And I'm like, so what is it? And he's like, So it takes place. No, no, it takes place during World War II. Yep. And a guy gets a jet pack. Yep. No, I've seen that. And he, fly, he fights on that. a Zeppelin. It's a good Disney movie. Yeah. yeah. The, rocketeer, racket, the Racketeer. Yeah. Rocketeer. The then Racketeer. Then he gets arrested and goes to jail for, <laughs> for gambling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A rack of tears. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this is the podcast, by yeah, the way. this is it. Ooh. Remember last night I mean, when we were talking name, about... Yeah. 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 <laughs> we were talking about how much we prepped for every episode. Yeah. This right. is what we get. Yeah. I mean, we did do a lot of prep visually because this episode... For the listener, non-viewer, I just want to explain. We went through a lot of very specific angle work. A lot of prop uh, elements are involved in order to make the size difference so big between yeah. <laughs> uh, 5.30 a.m. call time. <laughs> and here a while. Yeah. we actually did a lot of uh, what uh, Wetaworks was doing 
for uh, the Lord of the Rings yep. and for playing with a, a, a lot of the dynamics. Yeah, of, a lot of, of force the, perspective yeah, stuff. Yeah, force perspective stuff. Yeah, I'm Gandalf. <laughs> yep. And then it's, Sean is Bilbo. Force Frodo. perspective sounds He's aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> like, Frobo. I did more consensual. Uh, <laughs> I did notice that it was pretty funny when I was setting it up. perspective. And I was like, should I ask Brad to sit there instead mm. and Sean to sit here? And then I was like, no. <laughs> it's fine. It's well, I, fine. I was thinking more about the consistency aspect. That is fair. But listen, we're not here to talk about. I think uh, this chair goes up. How this podcast? <laughs> oh, no, that screws with your. Happens. No, you're good. Yeah, you like, we're here. We're here to talk about Sean and his uh, yeah. raconteuring, all yeah, the racketeering we charges. Guest him. Well, yeah. I was gonna. I, I, I was. I, level, I was gonna. Kind of, I don't like that at all. Yeah. I don't like that at all. <laughs> like, see, because now it just makes me like instead of me being tall and fat now i'm just fat <laughs> now our, our audio audience i need a little thing at the bottom of the screen at all times that says he is six seven yeah like, just so people know when they see me there's yeah. a lot of leg under there guys a lot, a lot of leg a lot, a lot. Not three of them six, Coil, seven. coiled like a python um <laughs> but uh no so it's funny sean and i have been friends for a little bit and we'll kind of get into like that is funny i'm kind of figuring out when that happened but uh he's often in texas and so he's working, there. <laughs> he's working. Yes, he lives there <laughs> on the ranch, and he's working on this new documentary. He's a filmmaker as well, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been talking uh, recently this year, especially with through Chris Revel about him coming on our podcast, and it was going to be a Zoom, but we're like, um, and I, I kind of was like hesitant just because I'm like, we've never figured out a Zoom with the three of us yet. I'm yeah, sure we'll yeah. do it someday. We'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to have someone on as a guest via Zoom, and so we haven't scheduled it. And then last minute, Sean hit me up like maybe 48 hours ago. He's like, I'm going to be in Providence to interview somebody for this documentary. Um, he's like, do you have a couch I can crash on? And I said, show. And then I said, uh, let's do the podcast while you're here. So we made it work. Did you did you respond truly in that Vernacular? appropriated? Yeah. F A apostrophe. Uh -huh. you, your voice also went lower as well. Well, it's... I, I, well, There's a term for that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, 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 so in my text, I have like little brackets. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, a, it's not a parentheses. What's the, what's the pointies? We call them nipple brackets on an episode like <laughs> No, not nipple ago. brackets, the pointies. Oh. Like uh, the less than, greater than symbols. Yeah. Those. And, I'll, and I'll put like way deeper voice, possibly a different ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask about it. Okay. Please. Oh, I thought you used little emojis <laughs> to get close <laughs> to yeah. what it is. <laughs> I do use emojis too. <laughs> oh no, it's the sombrero texts again. <laughs> but yeah, so it all worked out. We're here, mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad you're here, man. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, that's what you're supposed to say, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's kind of uh, it's ironic, don't you think? Mm -hmm. uh, that your documentary that you're working on. Can we talk about that? Can we? Of course, can we yeah. say what it is? There's a website and, and everything. We can. Oh yeah. There's things people oh, can watch. We'll right? get into. Ooh la He's la. We're donating. Folks. He's got a URL domain. <laughs> uh, I built a website. I built it myself. Yeah. yeah so you're, you're. I mean, on one of those platforms that's yeah. easy to build stuff on. But. For sure. Uh, your your documentary is about podcasts, correct? Yeah, it's about the the medium for sure. Let's yeah. let's uh, maybe maybe we'll build up to it because it is a really cool project. I've known about it for a long time. I've actually seen a bunch of the footage and stuff. But it's funny because when did we meet? When did I, when did we meet? I'm trying to think of even how we met. If you're coming out of Ta Dallas, I mean, it had to be somewhere. When, it was around this Wilhelm thing, which started in. It's like 2016, 2017, possibly, so, 2017, 2018. So basically, you know, Fun Bearable's based in Rhode Island. There's a band called Wilhelm, a Wilhelm Scream based out of New Bedford, Massachusetts, which is right down the road. Mm -hmm. um, they've been in the punk rock scene for a long time. My band, Senior Discount, had played with the Wilhelm Scream many a times over the years. Um, great band. And Sean, was the first documentary you, you did, the Fat Wreck documentary? Oh, yeah. So yes. basically, uh, a long time ago, how long did you start that one? Wow, 2013? Yeah, so basically in 2013, uh, Sean started directing a documentary about no effects, uh, Fat Mike. Yeah, Fat no Mike, less, less no effects. There's very little no effects in it specifically. Yeah. Uh, like we, you know, for briefly, there's a couple of the other guys, but really it's about f the record label itself. The record label, and Fat it Records. started by Fat Mike. By Fat Mike from no effects. Right, yeah. exactly. So, and he used no effects, I mean, a big part of, Getting the bands popular was him using no effects as a way to like pr cross promote and things like that. Exactly, yeah. So it's it's like a you know it's a big punk rock record label that has yeah. a lot of the bigger punk rock bands, especially ones from the I'd say 
mid nineties to you know mid two thousands, yeah. roughly when they were kind of hit hit their stride. Yeah, yeah, kind of crescendo and came down, and then just kind of leveled out and yeah, started. put out a ton of a million good punk rock albums from a lot of the bands that like I looked up to. Brad got into punk rock from I did. the Fat Record, the, the, the Fat Rec sampler CDs. I was like, ah, oh, this band, no use for a name, and I'm writing it down and. Um, that was that was my gateway into yeah. uh, punk rock. That's yeah. a, in that's, the movie. In the movie, in fact, that's a big thing about this. How a lot of yeah. people that connected with. That's how I became the punk rock like icon that I am mm. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I take credit for it. <laughs> Yo, you should <laughs> absolutely skinhead. <laughs> I don't know. Is that skinhead? I think you have to have uh, it's, hair. It's, uh, one, one time, I accidentally poked myself with a safety pin. Yeah. <laughs> you were in a a, a horror film yeah. that was similar to a punk horror film that happened, mm-hmm. uh, but yours was called Grown Room. Yes. <laughs> And it was just me, ch- me trying to get off of a really soft couch. And yeah. I'm like, Aah! I thought it was you trying to get off on a really yeah. soft couch. <laughs> That's, That's, uh, that, was, that was the NC-17 was cut. <laughs> and uh, we had to cut it down. And the horror. Yes. <laughs> Man, so. that's, that's why it, it went to such poor reviews because oh, we had to cut it down to make it. I think it it's PG-50. on Tubi now, right? Yes, <laughs> Grown Room. It's, it's what killed Quibi. Oh no! Because <laughs> it was too short for Quibi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what are we supposed Hold to on. do? Rewind. Rewind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> it loops. <laughs> I hate it. The episode starts with previously on Grown Room. He goes, he goes, oh, and then it cuts to and it cuts to the current episode. He goes, oh, and it's over. Anyway, we have our fun. Yeah, that's so funny. Anyway, Fat Rec documentary. Yeah, so so let's, I want to kind of talk to you about how you got into filmmaking because it's going to end up in this really cool place uh, of this podcast documentary that you're working on. But how did you get into filmmaking? I don't even really know. It's so funny. I'm trying to think of how we fucking met. I, I you know maybe Twitter. Maybe I mean it's a weird place to get as uh, like you've been you've slept at my house like multiple times now. It was it was through well, and a, the, and the, the times that you know. Him. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it, was, right. it was through a mutual person because you know Chuck, Chris Revel. Uh, I don't no, think it was Revel. It was, was, was pre Revel. Was after I, I like Chris Revel's a great Chris guy. Chris Revel's just a new. Like that, I know that you guys know each other yeah. is new. To okay, me. yeah. He's Chris, like, Chris Grebel's a great guy in the Providence media scene, yeah. Providence podcasting scene, and he really pushes the idea of podcasting and stuff. And he um, d- interviewed me. He's a punk rock fan as well because he had interviewed me yes. for his podcast a long time ago. And that's yeah. how we met. It's actually, I think there's actually a lot of people involved in like filmmaking and podcasting that started in the music scene. I think a lot of that uh, lot. knowledge of all that stuff a lot kind of translated. Yeah, even as I go through the podcast like Rowan Mars, he, like they were using punk bands. Yeah, like, and, uh, and and even the thing you told me about Ira Glass that we'll get into and all that stuff. Yeah, oh, that's just random. Yeah, but it is that's it so is random. funny. Ira Glass was uh, one of the dead Kennedys. <laughs> Not a lot of people oh, know no. that. Yeah, not a lot of people know it. That's oh. very impressive. Yeah. Oh no, is really so. Funny. This American Life, yeah. hosted by previous dead Kennedy, Ira Glass. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, so so tell me how you got into filmmaking because I am interested. Because um, we're all we all have history here. Ray directed uh, Be a Man and Independent, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it's it's really fun. Well, I, I start in Grown Room. Grown yeah. Room. Yeah. Not, I thought you produced and directed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> casting. Yeah. You said the casting process was difficult. The casting couch was. Yeah, it was the same couch. <laughs> same couch. It's action. Rosie, action. <laughs> and you said the. Look disappointed in me, cat. <laughs> the spark of the idea for Grown Room. You said you were doing the casting couch and you said to yourself, we should just be filming this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and a legacy was Growing born. Room. Yeah. The outtake reel, the blooper reel. <laughs> we gotta look up. We gotta look up some words. That's what killed that actor. Words related to Grumps, the, the guy that starred in we Green make, Room. Just word, R. I. P. <laughs> We should look up words related to being grumpy and then just come up with parody movie titles. Sure. I like, Grump- to, I like to let them happen yeah. organically. Uh, no, know? I want a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kill the comedy. <laughs> so we, when, you were, when you were a kid, were you like making like little movies with your, your friends? Because wow, I, what a how, fucking well, I, I'll say this. <laughs> let, let, let me, let are me you me, making little movies with me, your friends? Let me little, continue, little Ray, before <laughs> jumping up. Because Chuck made little movies with his friends. Little mm. movies. Oh. Yeah. oh, here, take that. I, I don't mind yeah. stabbing Here's Chuck like I'll that. Say, is I wanted to do music. 
Okay. Like music yeah. was thing. I, and like I did play around the camcorder, but I wasn't like someone who was like, oh, I'm was so into film. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be a filmmaker. That wasn't like, I was like, I was going to do music like, and, right. and do audio engineering, which I am an audio engineer. Yep. And we have a studio. And I'm like, I'm going to make music. And that was like from, I think I was like 12 or 13. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And I did uh, media tech in high school. And yeah. where you like, what you kind of have, they make you, not make you, but like you get, you know, do a little bit of editing. You do, but I was focused on audio stuff. I was like, I want to know how to run soundboards. I want to, so I did that stuff and I did some, you know, little editing things because it was part, and we watched some films and it was, a, you know, he, the, the get teacher. Some theory and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the yeah. teacher like mm-hmm. showed us real good films. And yeah. so like, I wasn't like opposed, but it wasn't like my, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, music is what I want to do. Right. And, um, Really, what happened is like, like you know, you know how this works. You, you know, start a band. Like a bunny, we're, we're in a band, and we're like, well, let's do a, a become audio engineers because then we can record ourselves. We'll meet other people. Exactly. Like, yeah, there's yeah, a way yeah. that's sustainable. Where playing punk rock is not really a sustainable thing. Yeah. And so we did that. What was the uh, name of the band? Uh, the name of the band at the time was Samuel Caldwell's Revenge. Okay. Mm. Uh, we still are a band. Yeah. Uh, now we're called Nonstarter. Yes, yes, that's right. Which is you know, very vindicative of playing in a punk rock band in your 40s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Non-star. This is that, we're doing it anyway. Like, it's not going anywhere. We're Lou, doing it anyway. Loose, loose Stare at Blues? Is that... Is yeah, that, that was one of the songs. That's a... That's, wow. I, I, it's it's, buck, it's in there somewhere. Wow. I'm not, that's really impressive. Yeah. Um, but we did a studio called Dang Studios that eventually we, like, you know, built up into a place where, you know, making money from it for yeah. a while. And then, you know... The technology and everyone else started doing it. It's just like the kind of quality of people you were recording uh, went down. The it just sucked to do it. Yeah. And then, um, w- but around that time, we started a little record label called Dang Records because we had a, the ability to record and we saw some bands in the lo- area that were like doing similar kind of music. And we're like, hey, let's support that. And we had like nine bands. It's it still exists as well. We put out. Yeah. Um, now it's like more. I know how to do videos and stuff, so I can we'll find a band and. Say hey, we're gonna do one song. You keep the song. Right. Here's a video, and then it kind of keeps things going. Right. Um, but in uh, we got to the point where our band was playing some festivals. We went to go play Fest, which is this big festival yeah, Florida. in Florida. It's, yep. um, and um, unfortunately, one of the guys, uh, the person that I was doing a lot of stuff with, he had uh, a drinking problem, and. Fest is just nonstop drinking. Yeah, it's like free. I think at the time they had free PBR. Oh, There's like it when, just, when is Fest? Is it September? Yeah, October. It's October. October. Yeah, it's around the same time. Yeah, and it, it, sh- it has shifted over the years what it is and that kind of thing. But the t- definitely a time. It was I'd like, love to go to Fest. I've never gone. It's it's yeah. like a, it's like it's like really it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's really yeah. awesome. All the punk bands. Like, I think several hundred punk bands. There's like it's a very like indie feeling festival. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. It's not one of those huge festivals that feels mm-hmm. like. Huge stage, like, you know, insane ticket price. We're in, like, a stadium. Everything's, like, controlled. It's, like, basically a collection of venues across Florida all doing shows together, and people travel there. And it's a little bit... Yeah, it's a little bit more, like, of an indie th- thing. I feel yeah, it's a little like, bit yeah. I think they picked the wrong month for no, Florida. No, that, that, what they did is they had to do, like, there's that, it's, like, football towns, Gainesville. And yeah. that's, like, a football town. And, like, what happens is there's this big Georgia-Florida game that happens. Yeah. And all the, like people leave oh they're the, doing it while that's happening yeah because then all the venues are like real happy about it because that's when all the money leaves because oh, there's that's no one cool so they mm. kind of fill in this little gap and it you know wow so it's like that was the idea that's why the time frame is in october because it ha- takes place and then all the punk rockers come in all the football people you know i'm that's, sure there's punk rock football people right. but you know what i mean like the yeah, that yeah, really yeah, into generally. that college football thing that's that's a really cool idea of like the idea of like we have this thing in this area that takes away most of the people that live here once a year. So let's make a festival for that time to attract people to fill in the spot. Yeah. I've just never heard of that. For yeah, like and the local businesses right. like it because then they, it's, it, it feels like, yeah, like all the restaurants, because the, the, the festival takes, like you said, over the course of the, like most of this yeah. downtown Gainesville area. Yeah. And so like everyone's going to all the different restaurants and all yeah, the no, Airbnbs that, are getting booked up. That's you know, very it's like, cool. It's a cool idea. Well, my joke was going to be, it's just, it's called Fest. Uh, and it's in October, and there's already October Fest. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, that's but true. But that was like five minutes yeah. ago, so it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, good. actually, solid it, joke though. It's sure. it's end it, of it October. Get the it, DeLorean. I think it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
They might have. That's good. That's the the fact that they call it fest was kind of like not too imaginative either. It's just like yeah. they're just gonna call it fest. <laughs> What's it about? You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't say. No, yeah, it's, it's yeah. where we fest. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, that I, sounds gross. I kind of wonder. <laughs> Doesn't that sound <laughs> gross? That's where we fest. Yeah, fest That's the sequel. Wound. That's the sequel. Well, fest. Have the sequel to Grim Yeah, not that well, far. Yeah, it's Florida. <laughs> I know, wonder. Yeah. And a bunch of punk, dirty punk rockers. These yeah. are like the uh, you know, like I, these you know, not a lot of bathed people because a lot of the it's so many bands because like I think there's like 300 bands that play. It's like huge. Yeah. Over the course of the thing, like it's all bands will make their. Like tours land there, so they mm, usually yeah. are stinky. And it's a bunch of stinky I wonder. People. I, I I think this could be in one the, of those situations where it actually had a real name at first, and yeah. then everyone just started referring to it because we have the Chuck and Brad podcast was the precursor mm. to what we did with Fun Bearable, and like it had a name, and everyone would say the Chuck and Brad podcast, and so we just gave it gave into that yeah. eventually, right? It like had a real name, but well, they, I think they're hitting their eight. Maybe they're almost twentieth year. Yeah, it's pretty. Year? It's pretty it's, cool. I I would love to go. I think that's really cool. Go. I it's just cool. know that uh, Candy Hearts is reuniting at this year's fest uh, because now it's. I had talked about Best X on a previous uh, episode of the podcast, mm-hmm. and so they're uh, they're reuniting. That's that's my that's my one and only exposure to fest. It's interesting. I've I've actually had the idea for the past couple of years, and I really haven't brought it up to anybody because like it feels like a huge undertaking that I don't know how to do, of doing a pod Providence podcast festival. Because I'm like, oh, I'm connected to so many people that are in the podcasting industry that do big podcasts that if we can, could get them to come out and do one episode, you know, maybe we could do something cool with a couple venues. Um, but it just, I know it's such a huge undertaking that I don't have experience with. And we already have uh, Rogue Island taking place twice a year. Yeah, yeah. So it would kind of have to take place in between. Mm. Right, those two, like like you know if three if there's six months between we have to take three months yeah. right in between that to really push it out. But I never thought about the aspect of like, well, what if we do it during a downtime in the area where we're doing the festival because we want people to travel here. Well, and the businesses will be like, oh yeah, I'll give you a discount or a thing because that's I'm going to be empty. So yeah, you know. that's pretty great. That's a really cool thing. I'd have, I should look into that. That's really fun. Yeah. So you guys, you guys went down and played that. Yes, and because of the free flowing alcohol. Uh, some shit went down, and I'll just suffice to say, and this is the person that I had done the studio with and the band with, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you're kissing, and what happened? Yeah, no, no, no. Unfortunately, we're not kissing. Uh, there was like <laughs> some violence, like not extreme violence, but like you can do that and kiss. Yeah, yeah, I do well, a that's lot true. of that. Well, I should, should have kissed. Maybe that was <laughs> helpful. Uh, either way, I was like, well, all that's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah 10 years of working on oh i've been there the band man. and and so i was like uh, at the time i had just gotten this job as i the, wish there was more violence associated uh, with the uh, with <laughs> some of the stuff that happened with my also band. more kissing <laughs> lots more violent kissing uh i had i was the marketing director for this talent development school where like demi lovato and jessica simpson the kids bop kids would train and, and so i was Doing that, you were you were one of the kids, Bob. You were Bob, right? I was Bob. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I was Bob. Uh, no, those are actual kids. Yeah. Um, but I had to, like, I was like, well, I guess I'll try movies because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I, they needed to do music videos. I, I like, I was like, well, I'll figure out editing and all that stuff. Well, a I, similar thing happened to us because we were doing demos for my band mm-hmm. and because we had that equipment is why it was so much so easy to start the podcast. Mm, we yeah. were like, well, we do have condenser mics and we do have a mixing. This is a long time ago. So it's like yeah. Zoom H6s and all mm. that kind of stuff didn't exist. Um, but we did have all that equipment and so it kind of was just like, this is a financial barrier to entry for some people. Yeah. And for us, we just happened to have it from the previous thing we did. So it's a little bit easier to like guide that transition. Well, I was just like, okay, music didn't work. We tried and like, I can't rebuild, uh, to rebuild a band uh, and everything after like the amount of time and everything yeah. that had gone into it. It was like, yeah, it's uh, I mean, I was like depressed for probably like, uh, it's supposed to be funny. Am I supposed to be funny? <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to be hilarious. Yeah. Well, what about the? Well, then I well, got tell, tell, you know what? <laughs> tell, tell the joke you said in the car. Oh, <laughs> good. Tell them. What? Yeah. What was that? The the goods joke. Oh, I know. <laughs> is it about Jeremy Piven? It's such that, a bad joke. It was like in the moment thing. <laughs> <laughs> they said you're baked goods, and you said you did. Well, you have to get the context because it's a. I went donut. to a coffee shop and I got a donut that looked a little strange. <laughs> bit this donut and I see, it was I, I see what's coming it was strange uh-huh. and, I, and I said you know this place had a lot of uh, usually has a really good baked goods and I was like I'm like baked crappies <laughs> boom <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess it's a real, you didn't want to be there. Kind of I didn't bring it up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I brought yeah. it up on purpose because it was so bad. <laughs> Anyway, you guys are gonna violently fight and kiss. Yeah, <laughs> finally. You mean again? We did it in that moment in the car. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't now get over kiss it. Me, I said. <laughs> kiss me, damn it. So yeah, so you got into filmmaking. So so yeah, so like uh, actually, a fat wreck was like so. I produced maybe three music videos, and then we did. You a, did Friday, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, it was Thursday, both the, the, the Rebecca prequel. Black version and the Ice Cube version. <laughs> yeah, very strange. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny you consider Yellow Submarine just a music video. Yeah. But that was very impressive. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a couple music videos. <laughs> <laughs> How old am I? Uh, yeah, exactly. I know, I know. The logic of that joke. The, let's not go down that path. But yeah, so a couple of music videos. Uh and and they were just produced, and then um we our third music in like the place where I was the marketing director, it was like a bunch of rich kids yeah, yeah, living yeah. sent there. And so the third music video or so we did had a $20,000 budget for this like, uh, you know, 14, 15 year old girl doing like a country song. So we like had got to put together like a pretty significant music video. And who, who's paying for this? Like her the production parents, company? Yeah. Oh, her parents? parents? Oh, the Vanity Project, all, yeah. yeah. See, like I, I've never, I've heard of these. It's basically it's, the Rebecca Black joke yeah. come to life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I've heard of this kind of stuff. Who has but a career? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's true. It's it's so hard for me to understand it though. You know what I mean? Like a parent being just like, well, well what, let's just do this crazy thing. Well, the, like, this I, family had... They they were actually I didn't you know you didn't know it until you kind of knew it, but they were they were because they were pretty hum- humble in the way that they operated like their cars yeah. weren't crazy, but they were like they had an advertising company that sold like did the coupons for like all the major uh, like uh, grocery stores. Oh like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So oh they, Valerie Packard of of <laughs> Val Pack <laughs> Valerie Val Pack. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she doesn't good. want her name spoken. <laughs> like, I, I think contractually, I can't we'll believe it. We'll believe it. Don't leave that out. <laughs> Valerie uh, Packard. No, but they were they, like the family was in the millions. They were like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, extremely yeah. wealthy, and so like yeah. that was not that. And they were they and she was the girl worked really hard. So it wasn't like uh, yeah, you know, she was yeah, like, yeah, was sure, like, sure. But they wanted to give her that thing, and so we did the music video, and I hired a director. Well, it's and, awesome for you because the idea of getting a twenty thousand dollar budget for a music video is a big step in terms of huge. like organization and the actual production aspect of filmmaking. Yeah. Yeah. That's annoying. We've all kind of done yeah, and it. especially you know in that kind of realm, usually you're not making money shooting. Uh, Indi- films with teenage girls. You're usually doing that just for the love of the the crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, yeah. it's hard to generate income. It's on Chuck's that. version of grown room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> What's the oh the, du- the Doug Stanhope joke? <laughs> it's, oh, it's my favorite Doug Stanhope joke. You know, what you never see in a ch- <laughs> no, this is so dark. <laughs> you know, what you never see in what? child porn credits. Now there's people just doing it for the love of the crap. <laughs> That's a terrible. great That's joke. Terrible. That's a great yeah. joke. Yikes. Oh, God. That's a great uh, joke. We'll cut videos? that as the clip and zoom in on your face. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sean Cologne approved. <laughs> I approve this joke. Um, oh, yeah. can you look right at the camera and say, My name's Sean Cologne, and I approve of every single joke? <laughs> I'm Sean Cologne, and I approve of every single joke spoken in this podcast. That's great. Perfect. We yeah, we'll play at the we'll, top. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll record a bunch of jokes after you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that everything else was close up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they kept throwing stuff at him off screen. There's one edit where it just goes, okay, Sean, I'll read this list of jokes you just gave me. <laughs> I did it. It was me. (laughs) I'm reading it, and you can clearly see the cut along the screen, and it's just a freeze of you. (laughs) (laughs) Just froze. Yeah, and then it just cuts to a laugh. Yeah, I concur. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) They are like that. (laughs) They be like that sometimes. (laughs) I live in Texas. I should know. I would too. <laughs> I second that. Well, you may find it disgusting, but not <laughs> me. <laughs> the big thumb. All right, uh, so, so the, the twenty thousand dollars music video. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, we had like catering, and they put up they had a crew, and it was on red cameras, and it was yeah. rented cars, and 
motorcycles. It was really awesome. Yeah, that is cool. well, it is awesome to, to that. Like, it's a great it's step set to, a be, bar. To, to be. Yeah, exactly. To be like, we have a real budget, and we are going to actually make this a real thing. Because it's but tough. What we did is like uh, me and Joel, who is like uh, my, he's been in the band with me for forever, and we've done the film stuff. He's a cinematographer that I worked with for yes. all this stuff, and yeah, and he's the cousin of Kal-El. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You would like that joke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Joel, right? Joel. It's Joel. And he's, and he's, he's, Joel. he's a Hispanic gentleman. It's, it's it's Joel. Oh, Hispanic. Then he's Joel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll use that one when he goes, yes. <laughs> I, I was, he was like, it's like, oh, Joel? I'm like, no, it's Joel. Like, oh, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But like, uh, so he, uh, me and him were kind of like, everything was going pretty smoothly. And so we had decided like, hey, let's just make a little behind the scenes documentary thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll film what's going on and do little interviews with the people in it. And we had never, like, like I just thought it'd be fun to do. And it sure. felt like a cool thing we could added value if that makes sense yep. and I had been done starting to do a little bit of editing on some of the music videos so I was like yeah. oh this would be a, like a narrative thing I could edit yeah right and so we did that we put jokes in it like little visual jokes and things like that and uh, we showed it to the family and they were like they had rented a theater to do the premiere of the video and yeah. do this whole thing they're like oh can we show this and I was like well yeah that'd be great you know yeah and so they showed it and although there were some audio issues because we you know we just didn't know what we were doing uh, besides that, everyone liked it and people laughed when they were supposed to. And I was like, dance puppets. Like, it's yeah. like an interesting thing. You're like, they're going to laugh right now. And then like, yeah, laughter happens. Yeah. And uh, well, the screening is where the most fun is. For oh, the, for yeah. the first that was, well, or the most horror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the hardest part of, uh, uh, doing, uh, be a man documentary, you know, feature length thing. And it was the first documentary thing. Uh, and it was so difficult when we were doing screenings because uh, the the co-host of the the movie and myself are stand-up comedians. Mm. So we're used to just being really flexible in the moment, adapting to the crowd, doing all that stuff. And then for all of the screenings, like you said, they're they're laughing when they're supposed to. There's the joke. Three, two, one. Here it is. Uh, but we're just sitting there and like we hit play, and now there's whatever no happens happens. Yeah. yeah. If they don't like yeah. this part, it just continues on well uh, you might yeah. be able to relate to this too it was like when i did that it was for, like as a someone who had performed music with you know with bands and you can never watch yourself perform yeah right i mean you can watch a video of it but you can never have the experience that's yes. chuck's saddest yes <laughs> part of his whole <laughs> performance life but when you do the thing if the performance is happening the thing you put your yeah. work into and it and you're able to actually experience it in a way not the same way as someone who's yeah new, but you're experiencing it with the crowd yeah and i was like oh this is interesting i like this oh sure no i i, I did like it yeah. but it was it was always like every time we did a screening it went really well it was very it was received very well people loved it they were laughing everything was good but every single time when we started it, I'm like, oh, of course, yeah. you can't, I can't change a joke. Oh, yeah, there was some that, bad yeah. there, in, the, in a fat wreck. There were some audio things that like I that bugged the shit out of me. So I have to I have to I had to walk. I have to walk out of the room. Yeah. Anytime those parts come up. Yeah. Um, but that thing, pe they liked it. And yeah. so me and Joel, we were at band practice one day and I was like, hey, that went good. I was like, what if we made a short about something that we like? cared about you know yeah yeah and we were like i i i think this is around the time like that band called death and there's a bunch of like punk rock documentaries yes. that were on netflix and no one had ever talked about uh, at any point in time i hadn't heard anyone in any documentary talk about the period from the mid 90s to the 2000s everything is like the 80s punk rock the 70s yeah. punk rock and how violent it was and i was like that just wasn't my experience i no. saw a documentary about 30s punk rock yeah, yeah. it was -dum -dum. weird -dum -dum. it was weird it was a really <laughs> weird short. one yeah. it was the, short. Third, the 30s yeah. hip-hop one is, is a really good yes. documentary as well right. yeah her socks are low and she don't care and i'm like <laughs> what is this about yeah i don't understand I think it what the 30s I like, okay. I like the idea of a 30s punk rock band. <laughs> 30s punk rock band. I mean, they're, they're arguing against the Depression, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, you know, yeah, where, I, yeah. where there's economic dissatisfaction, there's angst and that drives punk yeah, rock. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, you need to do that documentary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a fake one. Uh, there, it already exists. I watched it. Yes. Oh, that's what you were yeah, watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was weird. What was it yeah. called? I, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> It was a play on one of the band's names, like one of the big bands of the 30s, the punk mm -hmm. scene in the yeah. 30s. Right. It was a big, oh, what was it called? 
Oh, I, I can't remember now. Yep. Mm. Darn, darn it. Yeah. That's right. Maybe maybe it'll come to you. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet it won't. won't. <laughs> maybe you'll look it up on Google because yeah. you can just look it up. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, we don't get service down here. No, no. Oh, yeah. my phone has service right now. No, no, we can't look it up. <laughs> oh, you, should, you Google it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I like how I reversed the joke. <laughs> like, you want to hear a knock knock joke? Okay, you start, right? And yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh shit. I feel I feel the same way about that time period though. That's the time period of punk rock that I got into and like I don't really I, I respect all the stuff beforehand, but I don't really relate to a lot of the eighties punk rock no, stuff. No, that vi- I mean my experience was not a lot of violence, it's a lot of more people being cool with each other. Yeah. yeah and like and being and I didn't get the you know, the what do you call it? Um what nihilistic part of it you know there yeah, was no nihilism it was a lot more like people cared about what was going on in their communities yeah, more. it was about inclusivity and diy and also yeah, politically yeah. like engaged yeah much like uh, a lot of punk rock before was like political but it was more like broad y- yeah and it, it, it was much much broader it, and also like everything it was more i don't know it's like different it's like a, yeah, a more I, nihilistic view of the world more of, against like, less for right yeah, yeah. exactly no, 100 100 when, when i think of like agnostic front and stuff like that I, like again, I respect all that stuff. It's just not what strikes me or what really got me into it. And I feel like eventually, a lot of punk rock was supposed to sound kind of abrasive for a long time, and then at some point, I think it broke, and they were like, "No, let's just also have melodies." Well, and, then, and I like that also more with too. the subject matter. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, like a lot of, you know, a lot of there's complaints about this because it went more pop, where yeah. it was more about like you know relationships, whatever, and, and, the and hell. like depending on what you were, you know, like like. No effects. They sing about all kind of stuff, but a lot of it was like interpersonal things. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, I think it kind of went back to the. Oh, 30s. I can see that. I think it oh. kind of <laughs> returned to <laughs> the. Yeah, yeah, they were big on the yeah, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> they started doing a lot of the covers from that period yeah. too. <laughs> what were the names? Uh, <laughs> my, my baby went to the talkie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let that black man sit here. <laughs> That was one. That was very ahead of its time. Yeah, very you did, you did a censored version of that one, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Caught me on the causeway. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> causeway? Is that a thing? Uh, What's a causeway? Wind up my no, jalopy. No, I'm not doing What's this. What's a causeway? I'm not doing this. Uh, <laughs> uh, this isn't define words for Chuck for an hour. Yeah, he doesn't know what it means. I have no idea. <laughs> Isn't a causeway like it's a? I mean, there there are so many like very hair splitty terms for like a Broadway, an avenue. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I looked yeah. this up. They're all freeways. Almost everything's a freeway. I figured. I mean, a freeway is just driving. It's just the any area that's a like. You ever like notice dr- you drive <laughs> on a freeway, but you free park on a, in a driveway, yeah, yeah, and you, you toll on a tollway. And yeah, you, that's good. And you've. Uh, see, because you never know what's going to happen mm-hmm. with, a, with a car. Yep. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how you should start your next special. Yeah. You yeah. never know what's going to happen with a car. You can't tell these jokes anymore. Oh, that's true. Seinfeld was right. <laughs> yep. You can't tell yeah. these kinds of yep. edgy jokes anymore. Did yep. he say something? Oh, yeah. 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 Because he talks a lot. and <laughs> He talks a lot about comedy for a man who's been doing that one for three decades you yeah, know what i mean yeah, yeah. i like seinfeld i appreciate the guy yeah. but this is what he said recently i have it on my phone because i was going to bring it up and this is this i think is, uh, some I, I was telling brad here. i think people are cherry picking this quote and the thing he actually brings up is true but i, I think it's I, he brings up a true thing but he uh asc- he he ascribes it to the wrong my, he, his takeaway is off my thing my thing we were talking about this yesterday i was talking to brad i'm like my thing that I agree with about Seinfeld, about like, I agree with the idea that there's a lot of comedy. I'll put it this way I was on Reddit last night. This is 100% true. It's just happenstance. And on the OJ Simpson's uh, OJ Simpson trial subreddit came up, which I'm not subscribed to. I You're think subscribed to OJ Simpson is innocent. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because we were actually talking about it on the walk. And I'm like, I think this is why it popped up because I didn't even know they had a subreddit. And someone said, it, like the 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 uh, the name of the post was like this always irritated me, and they're like I like Chris Rock as a comedian, but it all I thought I always thought it was fucked up that he did a joke in a special in the late '90s where it was like OJ's uh, you know uh, Nicole 
He's like, Nicole was letting Mark Furman drive around in a car that OJ bought for her. Now, I'm not saying he should have killed her, but I understand. That's what he would say, right? Uh-huh. That's the punchline. They're like, it's fucked up that he would take that stance, and that's how he looks at it, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And that's insanity. Yeah. To be like, sure, sure, I'm yeah. pretending this is a TED Talk. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that someone posted that, and a million people were like, yup, yup, yeah, that's, that's comedy back then. Murder is funny, mm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this, is, this proves Seinfeld right. That like people are just like, this, this is not comedy anymore because it's, I'm taking it as if you make this artistic thing, this is your actual stance. Mm-hmm. It's not a joke. It's not written for, a, for just a punchline. It's an actual take on something. Here's what, what I'll say, though, if I can chime in. Yeah. Back then, those people that saw Chris Rock may think that, but there wasn't a place for them to go type it out, and you see it. So, like, like there wasn't a... There's a there, that, that's a small minority of people, if that makes sense. That are doing that, that but are, there's a place for them to con- you know convene and amplify that well, idea. But I think most people are not like. I think you can still make jokes about murder. I th- yeah, of oh, course. Well, I, well, I, I hope so. Well, first of he all, he killed it. See, like, I, think, I think the problem is too. It's like I don't think that is a joke about murder. That's my first thing. I don't right? Think it's no, a joke it's not. About it's, he's he's relating to <clears> other things. But what I think about those type of people that actually take that stuff that seriously. It's kind of the same problem as the conspiracy theorists now. I agree Where with that. because they do have places to congregate, it makes them attract more people like that, and mm. it makes that stronger. Well, what's the quote? So, yeah, so I because we're we're off on something else now. Yeah, uh, I want to I want to read the quote specifically. Yeah, but really. to address your your point about the Chris Rock thing, I think the issue there, yeah, is what the internet has allowed now is people that are not partakers of the thing for sure can now chime in on the thing, yeah, right? Yes, so right. someone who isn't going to watch a Chris Rock special and hear that joke because they're there for the thing, totally that's yeah. there, yeah. can now pass judgment on it. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's why I always comment on episodes of Hot Wings and I'm like, spice is bad. Right, you right. Want plain, <laughs> but that's, I think cold that's, wings. A, that's a thing. That's, that's a, a big part of a lot of what this like, <laughs> Joke, uh, uh, breaking down jokes and and uh, analyzing things that comics say and stuff like that. A lot of it is just people that have no interest in actually ingesting the thing. Yeah, the way totally it's, agree with it's, that. It's, put it's, it's, it's also, basically like they're looking at it as a press conference as opposed to a comedy special. Yeah, yeah. or like a vegetarian like criticizing a cheeseburger. Yeah, but yeah, people are right. still you know? seeing Chris Rock though. Yeah, yeah, and he's not being taken down. And and th- I'm not. Like, I'm not saying that he's. I'm not saying. I'm not saying Chris Rock is canceled because of this. I'm no, saying I know that. The fact that there's a large amount of people who even know a specific joke from his special, they know it enough to know that, and they actually also think this must be how he really feels completely. Is is yeah, so but, bizarre I in mean, the first place. Dumb people are going to dumb. You yeah. know what I mean? And, I, I, and they're I, like, I'm saying, but there's a, now there's a place for them to document, yes, it. yeah, exactly. and, and collect and get stronger. Okay, but here's what Seinfeld actually said, right? Yeah. Because this, I want to, I want to address what you were talking about. Like, oh, he's right about this. I think he's right about what he's seeing. Yeah. And wrong about the cause of it. Okay, so here's what he said. In decades past, people just expected there'll be some funny stuff we can watch on TV tonight. Well, guess what? Where is it? This is the result of the extreme left and PC crap and people worrying so much about offending other people. Now they're going to see stand-up comics because we are not policed by anyone. The audience polices us. We know when we're off track. We know instantly and we adjust to it instantly. But when you write a script and it goes into four or five different hands, committees, groups, here's our thought about this joke. Well, that's the end of your comedy. Uh, and he goes on to say, well, we're not doing uh, we're not going to do comedies anymore. There is no uh, there were no sitcoms picked up on the fall season of all four networks. Not one. No new sitcoms. Right. And he's uh, he's ascribing that to um, to PC culture and and wokeism and stuff like that here's the problem you're seinfeld is right there are far fewer comedies Mm -hmm. seinfeld is right that no new comedies have been picked up by the big four yep Mm -hmm. no pilot i think one pilot was picked up uh uh, or one pilot was shot during pilot season that was a comedy those are all true things yeah him ascribing it to pc culture is ignoring 
everything happening in the media landscape. Right. Yes. Right? The networks aren't making new comedies because the networks are dying. Yeah, well, they have to have yeah. a place. They, they aren't making new comedies because they have to have a new Chicago whatever. They have to have a new right. 911 uh, yeah. location. They have to have a new CSI. Like This, it's, this it's, year yeah. was the first year where more people watched... Oh, what was the statistic? Uh, it was more than 50% of like network television stuff was uh was taken in through streaming and not on broadcast it was oh, more than oh, half wow. the numbers are completely gone now uh so like earlier he was talking about like oh there's cheers oh there's uh, there's uh mash i think were the two he uh he used his examples which is like dude what are you talking yeah, about yeah pull in teen witch I, this was it like those are so far ago where it's like dude now you can't even, the biggest comedy can't touch like a low rated episode oh, of Seinfeld when yeah. it was airing. Like oh, it doesn't sure. exist anymore. So he's right that comedies are dying. But the, we mo- talk about it a lot. They're moving to another place. Yeah. They're just not right, being, right. That, that format is not what yes. the but next him generation him coming saying, up, that's not how they absorb things. Yeah. yeah. And him saying, oh, it's because people are uh, worried about making jokes and it's PC. I don't know. Crap. I hear a it's lot like, of jokes what are you talking about? that really are, you know, I th- there's a lot of comedians. I, I would say right now there's more comedy. I've been exposed to more comedy recently. Well, yeah. than in a, a, than in a, a, in a while because of the uh, because of the TikTokization of clip and clippings. And sure, stuff. sure. Like, well, but that's where I feel people are not necessarily they're not doing scripted things like they used to, at, like for any kind of stuff. Well, I think I think what it is. It's funny because like I actually think that I was actually reading this thing recently about the idea of comedy not being a a bigger thing in media anymore because the way that people consume things has gotten so much more splintered yeah. right that it's harder to find comedic themes that appeal to as broad of an audience as sure, sure. as in like let's say 1996 right but there's so much like basically <clears throat> the the issue is it's that yeah it's the fact that the money's going away because yeah. the the networks are splintering and falling apart it's the fact that uh, things are consumed hyper short now. For sure, all of those things lead to essentially that form of media crumbling, and Seinfeld being a flagship comedy entity, right? Right. Coming out and saying it's because of PC culture it's, well, is like, dude, you're doing you're doing a disservice to trying to. Do you want to save some elements of comedy? See, this is this is what I also what I actually think is too. I do think that is a big part of it. I yeah. do think the idea of there being so much more interference, like the fact that you just said you get into more like stand-up comedy and stuff like that from clips and stuff. That's how I'm exposed to it more. Yeah. Well, so the thing is, stand-up comedy is bigger than it's ever been. Right. Because people ran from making movies and TV because there is too much censorship. And when you're a stand-up comic, you control what you do. And I don't know no, if it's just a censorship, but what happens is it, it costs a lot of money. And in order to get money, right. you have to get money from corporations. Exactly. They don't want to yes. take risks. Yes. And it's not just because it's PC culture. It's because their tr- they, their customer base is much wider, and they're trying to appeal I think to a wider yeah. customer yeah. base. So there's, but there is a similar it's, thing. Capitalism here. is the problem. Yeah. 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 No, I, <laughs> that's I, that's thing, so many things. So the thing that was left out of that quote that I wanted to bring up is he said, we did an episode of Seinfeld where Kramer hires homeless people yeah. to run rickshaws for people in New York. And now they probably wouldn't be able to make that episode. And I think that's horseshit. I, I, think, I think it's that's a true. horseshit excuse. I think I think that's probably true. No, it's a horseshit I'll, excuse. I'll, I'll on a this. network, on, I think on it's a true. network, yeah. Because Rob McElhenney tweeted yeah. back, like, you know, a cricket? Gre- agreed, yeah, every yeah, bit and, of cricket, and did, yeah. uh, did yeah. a screen yeah, cap. But of that's cricket. the thing is, I do think, like, yeah, but they, they had, got away with that because, this entire time. Yeah. But they got away with it on. Like, if you look at what Seinfeld is versus what It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is, I think that he's talking about the idea of making comedy on this level versus this level, and like. You got to think that the budgets and the income for all these people is minuscule. In the same way that Louis got to make his FX show by saying, "I'm going to do whatever I want, and I'll take a much lower thing." Yeah. I think it's another version of that where you get to make something on FX or a basic cable channel as opposed to a mainstream comedy on one of the big four. I think it's a really different game. I, think- I mean, Thirty Rock, Hannibal Burris was the homeless guy. Uh, like a recurring character on 30 Rock. rock but but when did that end? Uh, 20, 2012 or 2013. Yeah, yeah so like it's that. almost... Well, sure, yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's it's, a little it's, older. It's like 12 years ago. I don't disagree ago. that people's, like, their threshold for who has... 
Yeah. It's, it's the it's the 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 thing about like bringing more people into the tent, like and have and those people have a voice of and course. are saying, "Hey, man, I you know, yeah, of course, uh, uh, like kind yeah. of." I making think, fun of home, like they did. They did this thing, and I don't even remember this. In Austin, like uh, there's a company yeah. that like set up these Wi-Fi points, and they paid homeless people to be like Wi-Fi points. I do remember hearing about that. Oh, pe- I don't know about and, this. Yeah, and so like there is this sometimes dehumanization of certain groups. Right, right. And so maybe that rickshaw thing wouldn't fly because people were like, you know, that's kind of messed up to do that to another human being. And here's, <laughs> here's the issue. But, but, the, but that's the thing. I think the problem is just to respond to this real quick. The joke is that he shouldn't be doing that. Right. So that's the joke. You should make that joke because the, the burden is, it's not, this is great. Everyone should live no, no, this I way. No, no, I agree with that. I agree Just with that. In, in the same way that Michael Scott on The Office, it's like, it's not because this is the great way to live. He's being an idiot and everyone thinks of him as the fool. But that's fine. And and, right. and that nuance can come through for sure. For sure. I, I mean, don't think you see stuff like that. There, yes. No making, Wait, but like, here's here's the other part of it, though, yeah. right? The, the, speaking to the rickshaw thing, I want to yeah. go back to that for, for a moment. Yeah. Um, that joke, just like a million other possible examples, comedy dates faster than ever. Any so other yeah, form is, of uh, uh, of storytelling or fiction or okay. whatever. This is kind of where I land. Yeah. So that has nothing to do. Like a joke getting so dated has nothing to do. Sometimes it can have, uh, uh, you know, uh, everything to do with, uh, uh, you know, it Cultural being norms. inappropriate yeah. or offensive. Right. But for the most part, a lot of it is just like, eh, that's not funny because not now. It uh, now we don't see that as funny because. We understand more. Yeah. Sure, right? exactly. See, I agree with this one hundred percent. It's like, like, yeah. like oh, Ace we understand why people are homeless like now. Yes, yeah. And there has been a turn to say, hey, like the people who are in that position have a lot more to do with not their personal decisions per se, but the way our system right. is set and up. And it has nothing to do with like, oh, that's inappropriate. We don't laugh at that anymore. It has everything to do with we know about it now. Uh, I, 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 I agree with this. I watched uh, as a, as a good example. I watched uh, the first episode of. Uh, the League of Gentlemen, a BBC show yeah. that was a sketch show kind of thing uh, when I was uh, uh, in Eng- uh, England recently. And it was on and I was watching it. And it has a character that just didn't age well, right? And it was a cab driver uh, named Barbara. And it was played by a man who's like super masculine and like gruff and hairy and all that stuff. And he's talking about going through. Uh, the process of of changing gender, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't not laugh at it because I was like, that's inappropriate. You're making fun of trans people. Right, right, right. I didn't laugh at it because it's not funny anymore because yeah. it's not an outsidery thing. It's right. not an unknown to me anymore. This, yeah, this I is... understand when I see that, I don't see a caricature. You see a person. I just see a person. And then yeah. it gets hard to see, make a joke about well, this, right. this, yeah. this is This is what's different. It's hard to take that, which to me makes a lot more sense, and separate it from the people who go, I can't believe Chris Brock is celebrating murder. That's so funny. So yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the problem. This is, this is the problem. It's like there are disingenuous people that uh, take oh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. you just said, yeah, and they uh, like because you're not even supposed to use the term Karen anymore, really. But like they kind of ter- they use it, they use it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're, they use it as a a contention point. Rather, their goals are different. Their goals are different yeah. because it's fun to say that's not okay. Some people just think it's fun to say you can't do that. Hey, mm-hmm. stop doing that. Hey, I'm the policeman. I got my little crossing guard vest on. And my whole thing with the Seinfeld thing—I is... was elected crossing guard. <laughs> my thing with the Seinfeld—you yeah, were thing calling is... yourself a policeman. Yeah, but I also think the joke would be different, like now, if you did the rickshaw <laughs> thing. Right. It, it, there may be a turnaround in the episode where, like, that person isn't just like a faceless person doing yes. it. Yes. That they you, that you find out about something, or they make fun of the other person, and like, oh, like, yeah, it, it, it's know. just so much of comedy because it ages rapidly. You can have a joke in something, and then five years later, go, that's not funny anymore. Yeah. Because it's just part of the zeitgeist, and it is what it is. And what's funnier is going even further, right? I just think it's super ironic that Jerry Seinfeld is saying, is identifying a very real problem, mm-hmm. which is, hey, all this shit is disappearing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going away. You know, we t- we've talked a lot about in in the film world. Like, I'm always banging the drum for the low budget comedy yeah, movie because right. yeah. it just doesn't exist anymore. But no low budget movies are really happening other than like indie and stuff like and that. Horror. That like 10 to 15 million dollar movie doesn't fucking exist anymore. Yeah, right. But that's because the industry is breaking. So those don't exist. It's yeah. not because people went, 
our sensitive values yeah. won't allow for a $10 million comedy. You know what I mean? And the fact that Larry David, his creative partner for so long, just finished Curb Your Enthusiasm this month, right? Yeah. While Jerry Seinfeld's going, you can't make these jokes. I it's think, like, I, and he's it making can. that joke, and it was pretty like, like he was kind of in the zeitgeist as well. So it wasn't yeah. just like this off to the corner. Well, thing. I'll say this. I for, my my take on it is this. I think that comparing it to basic cable shows, I think that even though he didn't say it, he's probably just talking about comedy on a different level. I do think that there's a huge difference between like Friends and It's Always Sunny in terms of production. In terms yeah, of yeah, budget, yeah. In terms oh, of absolutely. Income. But that's because then, Friends. Any f- version of yeah, Friends yeah. can't exist anymore. I, I know, I know. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just black people in that show at all. Yeah, sure. yeah. Ross, the rest of his girlfriend was black. No, that one time. That yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> that, one. <laughs> that one. In New York. No, someone, in- someone counted, and I swear to God, I, I don't quote me. I think it's three. I think it's three. It throughout, is like an insane throughout two hundred and sixty yeah, yeah. something episodes. Yeah. But to finish my thought, sorry, sorry. It's. I think that comparing it to basic cable shows is not what he means, which is whatever. I also think comparing Curb, which started in the a year, I think it started 18 months after Seinfeld ended. Sure. It's also difficult to compare. But my point is this. Always Sunny. I think, no, It's Always Sunny is not the same, though. It's not making, the idea of making It's Always Sunny versus making Seinfeld is like, is like making Anchorman versus. I know, That's but fair. it's difficult because nothing exists at that level anymore. So we can't compare. I, I agree, I agree. We can't but compare my, anything to Friends or Seinfeld. My point, my point is basically... I think you're right about the nuance, nuance viewer who like sees things the way you do. Then I think there's also the people that see things the Chris Rock celebrates murder way. Sure, sure, yeah. And then what we were talking about with movies getting like taking less risks, and that's why there's less. That's what it is. It's the it's the actual capitalism part of it catering to this your actual intelligent mindset, the dumb mindset of the Chris Rock person. And even then, to me, what they're doing is they're telling the creator, you can't make these 8% of jokes you want to make. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, yeah, we could complain about that, or we could adapt a little bit and just move forward and not make that 8% of jokes and fill that in with more of the rest of the percentage. The, there's you know a, what I mean? Yeah, there's an like, issue, though, when he like when he's saying, uh, you know, you write your script and then uh, it goes through four committees. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's not about... That's not about, uh, uh, you know, hyper-liberal PC culture. Yeah. That's about corporate bullshit, right? Oh, for we sure. We talk about corporate comedies. Like, it happens with scripts of any kind. For sure. You're going to get noted to death. a significant amount of money. They want yeah, to yeah. have us. That's yeah. what comes with money. And it's coming from is. Jerry Seinfeld, who's like, I want to make my Pop-Tart movie. What the fuck are you talking about? This is you what, know I what I mean? This is what he's complaining about. Because and he's if he's complaining the about process, that... Fucking fund some people, then, dude. You've got the money. Fund the people that you're that saying don't have a voice. He doesn't care about other people. Oh, he, he doesn't give that, a shit. He says that yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, tough. That's, it's that's tough too. Doesn't like me yeah, making yeah. a judgment. He's like, I don't care about. Right. That. It's right. tough too because I do think that one of these things with, and I'm not criticizing, but like older people, is they're just like, I came into the, this industry at this time, and all these burdens are accepted by me. Right. Because this is where I came in. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. like, now it's. Let's call it 35 years later, right? Mm-hmm. Now there's new burdens. And he's like, well, these are not accepted because I'm already at the top. It's like, no, no, no. It's just a different versions of the burdens you did accept back when you started doing right. it. Can I, can I also say this? He has a new movie out. Mm-hmm. So, one, you're going to do interviews. Right, right, right. And two, he is always going to be salty. So this feels a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels a little... Uh, uh, I don't. I want to say manufactured, like, haha, this is what we're gonna. This is exactly what yeah, say. Yeah. But in the sense that, like, he's gonna say something controversial. Let's we'll push it out. And now we've mentioned his movie mm. at yeah. least one time. Sure, sure, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying we did anything wrong. I'm saying like, but the, it's definitely. Well, I'm already biased against he, he them also, because I fucking I shot half of a documentary, <laughs> uh, like a comedy documentary thing that I was doing. It was it was a hybrid. It was cutting edge. I loved it. And it got squashed immediately when the Pop-Tart movie was coming out because mine was about Pillsbury Toaster Strudel. Yeah. And it was really fun. No, yeah. dude, Strudels, man. You, yeah. you wearing that it. costume was the cutest yes. thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Look, I just I fought hard to make sure there was no bottom on that costume. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be able to see it. I swear yeah. to God, I can't do the laugh right no, if I have no, a bottom. That's because shame. the left I PC group, the woke mindset, <laughs> yeah. doesn't want people to know about those shows. Uh, if you can't handle the Pillsbury Doughboy having his dick out, I don't know what to tell you. The world's going to be very hard for you, sweetheart. Is, uh, yeah, like, I actually understand what Seinfeld is saying at this point just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now you get it. Yeah. Just now I get I, it. Uh, my issue with it was like, there's a real thing here, and it's getting obf- obfuscated by nice. like a, a, a little nitpicky it, what, thing. What bothers you know? me is that it just gives more fodder to these other like they're uh, like. There's those two sides what we're talking about. There's the people you're talking about. They're like Chris Rock is trying to murder everybody yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. But there's also people on the right. They're like, yeah, everything's woke. Like yeah, consider, yeah, yeah. Any consideration for another human being, it's, it's like, woke. It's right. woke. You're like, yeah, yeah maybe that. we shouldn't have that. You know, make fun of the paraplegic person's you know thing. Like, yeah, woke. You're so woke. What do you oh, like? It's, I, I, I call it the, uh, the anti woke mind virus. Like, yeah, it's I, like it, it's it like, does drive me crazy. It turns the freaking frogs. The world. Skin. They view yeah. everything as yeah. potentially woke or not woke. And it's like, bro, just having some sympathy for other people does not make you woke. Yeah. Like, like I, I, you Oh, know. there's, there's a woman in it. Woke. Yeah. That's, uh, or what, yeah, what was, what was the line? She's competent and not, a, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, what? Poor Brad has been trying to speak. No, it's all right. What was, what, what was, what was the line? Like, doesn't that joke know it's 20? Yeah. Yeah. Who, it was, it was, was it was a thing that said like, doesn't that 1980s movie know that it's 2024? Yeah. And that's apply that stuff retroactively. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I, I just, I, I think about the whole thing, specifically the rickshaw. Uh, you, yeah. you know, I'm still going to laugh at homeless people. <laughs> And and that's, that's a bold. And that is, Brad, call them what you always call them. <laughs> we call it we call, stinkers. We, we, no, we call it. And that is, and that is, that is Sean Cologne approved. Sean Cologne approved. <laughs> I, I concur. Yeah. I will yeah, say, down with homeless people. I, I also think one of the biggest problems. With, Finally, you know, someone back to your house. said it. With all these talking points and stuff, I think one of the biggest problems is Jerry Seinfeld makes this thing. He says this quote, and I feel like people kind of feel like a pressure to be like, I'm either. Fuck yeah! Or they've appreciated. Mm. Fuck no! Right, and right. I'm kind of like nuance. This this does affect like at least ten percent of things that yeah. are happening. And my issue is like you're right about the thing. Yeah. You're wrong about like the cause. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I mean? yeah, to me, it's you're wrong about the majority of the. Cause. Yeah. The, well, the reason mm. that's the problem. The reason that comedies aren't around anymore is because they're letting women into comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's. I mean, that's a, stinkettes, as you I call them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I do think that there is, you know, it obviously affects things, but it's like, what do we do? Do we sit around and complain about how this is affecting things along with a million other aspects? Mm. Or do we say, let's just make a good thing, and if we have to maneuver a little bit, we maneuver a little bit? Yeah. Doesn't that feel a little right. bit more productive? Yeah, and that's why I said earlier, like, if you are pissed off about this, you have all of the ability in the world yeah. to nudge and fund and yeah. introduce and make things be allowed to 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 further i'm sure if if we were making a tv show because we you know we we were working on a show like i told you last night that we pitched this summer that we you know it's not out there really i'm sure that if we gave all of our ideas to a network even a basic cable network that we were bitching to it was called rickshaw flippers <laughs> and we were going to flip houses with homeless people i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure watch that yeah i'm sure we would have gotten notes in the back. 80s yeah. We would have gotten notes back that some of the stuff we wouldn't be able to do because it would be yeah, yeah, too yeah. offensive or whatever. And again, it comes back more to what you were saying, which is like, well, we're just being careful because we are a business and our customer yeah. base is blah, blah, blah. And so in some ways, that is what Jerry Seinfeld is talking about. In some ways, it's the opposite of what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah but there's and a way for, me, for things. For me, it's just maneuver. You just yeah. got to fucking maneuver. Right. And you know what? If we were fucking, if we did a season of our show... And we were like, man, this 10% they made us cut is so funny. Then let's go take whatever that 10% is and go figure out a way to put it somewhere more independent. Right. And then we take our mainstream ideas yeah. that do make it through and we work with that. And if you become big enough and recognizable enough, your brand is understood of like the type yeah. of humor that you do. Like South Park. Yeah. Then you can make or whatever Gervais. you want. Yeah. 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 Or right. uh, And, and it's, it, it, it's an issue. But it's like, I look at it, I think the reason I feel uh, like an emotional reaction to what he was saying yeah. is being a comedian, being someone who is at the bottom trying to 
get things going, yes, right? Whether, whether it's pitch meetings, whether it's, uh, you know, trying to sell this thing or talking about this other thing that happened and then there was a big uh, uh, take, takeover and so now that network is gone, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Um, it bugs me because I look at it going, yeah, it really sucks that Comedy Central like doesn't make anything anymore, Agreed. right? Yeah. And it just happened. And my problem with that is the the reasons behind it are not because like they didn't stop making stuff after broad city because people were offended by broad city right people because women got it. into comedy yeah. yes, Brad, right, that right. Was the problem the problem is because it's a dead channel like it's yeah. same with mtv like they're right. deserts now yeah. and it's because television as a medium is going through a big shift because yeah. the internet I would be, exists. I'd be really curious because I would say yes on net, uh, some of the audiences and some of the shows are, uh, the newer shows are pretty small. Yeah, yeah. Compared to some of the stuff that's happening on YouTube and I would bet that there are podcast channels that do comedy that are unencumbered by any kind of real censorship. For have sure, Have bigger yeah. numbers than shows, uh, uh, you know, on current yeah, absolutely. So why are you making it for a broadcast network and not building up to a place where you can pretty much, with some exceptions, do talk about whatever you want? Mm -hmm. So there are is comedy, produced comedy, animation. I, I see it. Yeah. Uh, and these people have like you know massive audiences. Like how many people like Seinfeld? How many people watch Seinfeld you know, in a given episode? Oh, I don't know. You know. Was it like? Millions. Yeah. Like, well, how many million? Eight million? 20, 20 million? It was huge. I mean, yeah. but some of these YouTube channels are like 53 million, you know, subscribers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my point is, is that where you can experiment with those things is different. I do agree that's not in the mainstream culture because the mainstream culture has fractured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. you can't have that thing. It, 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 like... And what if you were doing that kind of comedy, like say Seinfeld, he wants to do whatever, you can do the rickshaw thing on YouTube right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, there, no one's going to shut that <laughs> but down. But, like, right. with real homeless people. <laughs> no, no, literally. I right. don't no. want to hear your pitch again. <laughs> Come on. No, but he's actually right. There's like YouTubers that go and do things to some of uh, yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and like, that's a criticism yeah. of Yeah, the Chuck thing. loves but they're the not bait truck video. Down. But my issue. <laughs> and, some of them, and some of them have <laughs> audiences in the millions and yes. are generating revenue more than maybe someone. Maybe not Seinfeld because it's one of the biggest yeah, shows yeah, of yeah. all time. But, but it does get into a murky territory where I, I have issues with that because then it becomes the onus of like all financial ability is on the creator that's, of that's, doing the sole thing. That's what's happening. And there's that's no, what's happening. Yeah, and there's no way to come in. And it, it it's like lightning striking kind of stuff. It's like the lottery stuff. Yeah. But what worries me is it feeds even faster into the lowest common denominator situation. I'd also situation. say, it depends on what it is. Uh, I think you have that. But I also would say that getting a show on a television, getting a, a, a television show, a comedy, at any point in time, mm. was striking lightning. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. That, was yeah, like, for there, sure. There, 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 like, that was an impossible... Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. The, and the people who had access to trying doing that was mm -hmm. really thin. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm not... But those things allowed people to come into that sphere. We were talking about this recently, yeah. uh, where if you have a TV show, like a comedy, sh uh, a, you know, a, a sitcom, let's yeah. say a sitcom, yeah. gets to air, mm -hmm. gets three seasons, it's a lower budget kind of thing, it's not a hit, but it goes, right? That creates jobs for a ton of people to continue making a living in that space, right. and it creates networking and relationships and yes. like all this stuff that can further on like you watch this sitcom oh it had two seasons it wasn't great but hey three people that are awesome were in that and then 5 years later they're killing it right yeah the issue with that is you take uh you take what is today that version right mm -hmm. a podcast i think the example i used was like theo vaughn right yeah. if the theo vaughn podcast is getting the numbers that one of those middling sitcoms would get uh, what is the rising tide lifting all ships in this situation? Exactly, it's Theo Vaughn and one producer, a producer, maybe. maybe. Right, but yeah. this is this is actually the argument uh, about the entire film industry. I mean, I, I, as I've been going through making a new movie, the Age of Audio one. Mm -hmm. um, it has a website. It does have a website. <laughs> 
<laughs> AOAMovie.com. There you AOA go. AOAMovie.com. Yeah, you can check that out. But, but like in the discussions with like... Uh, don't my... go to AOAMovie.net. <laughs> <laughs> and don't go to HOAMovie.net. Yeah. <laughs> that was it the... is against the rules. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And we, they've made us start bleeping the word Karen. So yeah. it is, yeah. it stinks. <laughs> and we, can't there, even there are rules about anymore. how high our shrubs can be. Yeah. <laughs> I can't leave my boat in the, in the driveway. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, Sorry, AOAMovie.com. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm just, the point yeah. is, like, I talked to my executive producer, who's, like, high up in, he's an exe- he has a bunch of fast channels, he's operated with, in that space, mm-hmm. knows a lot of the executive people that have been at, like, Paramount and all these kind of people. He's like, the entire, he's never seen it before, the entire industry is shrinking dramatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, not just the jobs for the guy making the TV show, the gaffer and all the people right, we're talking right. about, the exact these people are exiting the yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Like, yeah, first like yeah. you know oh, what yeah. I mean? You, like it's so like the this industry is uh, like as someone who's make, has been making movies and I'm help I mean I'm getting maybe in the last little bit of it maybe. That's yeah. where it's like the thing. I mean Jerry Seinfeld he said it just recently he's like film industry's dead. He's like yeah, yeah. not not the pinnacle anymore. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's going to be like opera Opera still exists. Right, right. And it's a highly talented thing to be in and it's of highly course. skilled. But how many people are supporting their families with opera at this point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. that was at once the primary way of storytelling yeah. in, in a you know, long, yeah. long time ago. But so my point being is like this sh- it's not great. Yeah. But that shift is happening to and but the comedy, the people who are gonna make comedy, they're gonna still make those people are still going to make that. Yeah. But it's not going to support as many people. As it right, right. Yeah. But my issue is like ascribing it to wokeism. Mm. Oh, 100%. Is, you know what? It, you know That's what it, what's the bullshit part of it. Yeah, it strikes me as uh, a coal miner sitting on a solar panel going, you know what the problem is? These shovels are gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, like, it's like, no, no, you're, you've no, got no, it backwards no. here. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. th- he's seeing a shift and... Because <laughs> gay shovel, the gay yeah. shovel, these damn good. gay shovels. <laughs> Call a spade a spade. Can't say that anymore. <laughs> no. Yeah, I but do, it's, it I, is. I do. I mean, I do think it'd be crazy to think that that's not a part of what's affecting comedy. I mean, J- no, Jamie I, Fox, I do. Yes, I would say yes. it's very. It's it's, like, it's it's not a thing. I would say he's like Simon felt like he said Simon's not not right, not mm-hmm. not wrong in that sense. Where there are some people who take that yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the thinking about others. Too far where they stop thinking about the people that are doing the thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're just and, like jokes are statements. And, and, well, and they're making, jokes are truth. And they're doing uh, assuming uh, like they don't assume positive intent. They're assuming that they're yes. doing the, yes. they're assuming they're saying it for the worst reasons rather than either make a mistake or and uh, you know and they're not delineating the people who are doing it for shock and attention and the people who are doing yeah, it. Yeah, they're not looking at in, nuance in a or creative, yeah. you know, but thoughtful that's, way. That's the surface level argument being had while the ship is sinking. This is and it's saying. like, so I don't know, it's, say. it's not the iceberg. The iceberg is the yeah. shrinking. Yeah. Yes. So exactly. there's less money, so there's less risk. Yes. That's, yes. that's so, the, the, the capitalism less risk thing is the answer to the comedy question and the answer to the movie question. Right. And so it's, I think it's silly for him to be like, yeah. uh, you know, Mash doesn't exist anymore because of PC culture. Right. It's like no, Mash doesn't exist anymore because the structure in which to have a massive yeah. water cooler TV show yeah. doesn't exist yeah. anymore. And that was uh, that was a momentary thing anyway. There's- mass mass like media mm-hmm. is only been around. That's I've for been a small I've been saying that forever. Yeah. It's a weird thing. There's a, there's a- it was a weird thing anyway, and it had a lot of its own really bad negatives. Sure, that were really only, like, like oh, remember when we had only three channels. Yeah, I remember like three people dictated what we saw right, or heard. Right. Well, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's an well, interesting, not, you know, I mean, three yeah. Entities. There's a great podcast. I think it's from Fresh Air, and it's called "How Algorithms Are Flattening Culture." Right, right. Yeah, and it's he, this guy wrote a book about denominator. it. I can't remember the name. There's a guy who wrote a book. It's a gr- like I've been listening to a lot of podcasts like that recently, and it's really, really fascinating because sometimes you just like, and I'm sure maybe all of us have probably felt it, where you feel a shift. And you feel things, and you're like, this is really difficult to put into words or difficult to kind of put everything into an easily digestible way to describe this. Mm -hmm. But the idea of all these different people that are now becoming creators in whatever way they are, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, combining with the big stuff, combining with the middle stuff, which is, let's say, comics doing their own podcast on a minimal budget, you know... um, 
all these people are starting to bend more and more and more towards algorithm, mm -hmm. which is essentially a code word for, for the lowest common denominator. Right, right. And everyone is like, well, let's just do this. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll make this little change. Well, we'll do this. And everyone is turning I into like... I don't necessarily agree this, that it leans toward the lowest common denominator. Oh, come on. No, because I've seen some of the most... On some reels and some TikToks, I've seen really thoughtful... And those people, the thoughtful people, build an audience. And it's like, I, I don't... like I see where people like and are explaining in-depth things where I hadn't really heard it. That's 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 great that they exist, but I don't. But no, think, they have audience. They have massive audiences as well. But I don't, I don't think well. that makes up the majority of people who get to the. No, most no, I don't. I, I, I don't. Think it's I don't. Mostly lowest I don't think the whole thing is going toward. Because I think we've all, we've been LCD for the longest time. There's like, LCDs is not a new phenomenon. Yeah. But I'm saying that that there's now more places for someone who doesn't necessarily. They can build an. I don't know. I'm I'm more hopeful than you are. I'm, 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 I'm hopeful too. Uh, because I'm hopeful I, too, I've but seen the, the problem is when we have TikTok and Instagram, and they're saying we're treating everyone as an equal, and we're counting how many microseconds or nanoseconds that they keep their eyes how it on screen. If you, it talk, is though. No, if you look, uh, listen. I'm, like, if you, you can believe what they say or not, of course. But when you hear like the people who make these things and what the choices they're making, like just recently, Reels made a. Uh, they they're, they're said any duplicated content that's repurposed content, they're gonna down. So all these accounts that are yeah yeah out, re like reposts or reposts of old videos and things right. like that that and, and that clog up the thing. They're so there there there's an active push and pull between humans who like to figure. out... There's a group of people that don't care about art. But they look. They're just getting, trying to get engagement, and they sure. look how to yeah. to uh, to uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, they learn how the system works, so they exploit right, yeah. it. But then there's a bunch of other people that are making things, and that's what the that's what actually gets a lot more engagement. So they're these places are pushing to have that more creative stuff. And that LCD... I, th those things stand out because they're going against the grain. Well, exactly. they're trying to, well I'm saying there's an active push there is yeah, a push. Yeah. to get rid of that because that L, that low that low quality content you're talking about is not good because it eventually pushes people off because they're like right. oh this is all garbage and you know well, yeah. I think eventually my hope is the internet police will force fun bearable to stop <laughs> no, that's my hope well, you know? I, I've seen just, I just see so much I've seen so many creative things since we've reached, reached name this. one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, that's really hard. No, you're. That's a problem. No, one actually. time I saw a horse wearing sneakers. No, I you're, saved I, them. I think, wow. I think horse I saved, shoes. I think, <laughs> I, think, I think we are getting to the point. And Ray actually sent me uh, a talk this week or last week. Actually, it was right before you left for UK about one of the guys that was a creator of Patreon mm. and how Pomplamoose. There, there are people. Yeah, yeah. There are people that are going for you know mass appeal, and then there are the individual creators who want to make what they want to make, and they want to make it great. And mm -hmm. even though it doesn't have mass appeal, he doesn't want them to be detoured by the algorithm crushing them. Right. But I do think, in terms of TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever the fuck, they are businesses. And all they care about is how long people are staying on their app. Oh yeah, it's Bo and, Burnham's uh, thing that he said at a at a thing uh, a few years back. Now yeah. he's like the last frontier that they're going they they can take from you. Yeah, is your time. They want your time. Yeah, they want your eyes and attention. So, that's the last. And why does Instagram thing. tell me what I've been scrolling too long? So so that's the thing is the the, the thing mm -hmm. is like they want you to. I do think it's going to be mostly stuff. That appeals to the most people, and the most people will always be the lowest common denominator. And I, but that's I, just mass. I would say any medium, almost any medium. Well, that that's, is it's, where, it's where tough it because I think when there was television in, like, let's say the mid '90s, they weren't able to uh, measure things so specifically, and there wasn't so many ways to measure things. But also, so, that was a new thing too, because there used to be like the television code, and mm -hmm. like, yeah, so there was. So for only in this little period, I think what a lot of people are nostalgic for was the anomaly, not the norm. Mm. Mm. If that makes sense, because like sure that that whole thing, that whole time period where like Seinfeld did exist, where he, he was in a moment where that medium was at its pinnacle, and also the rules were lax. But previously, 
you know, there was a lot of rules about what you could say on TV. Oh, yeah, for like sure. That. Oh, sure. So, yeah. so, like, so, what, so what yeah. I'm saying is, like, <clears throat> you're talking about that's a, a, that's of, a To me, that's, like, a very... The idea of the censorship is a separate thing from the well, lowest no, I, What I'm just saying thing. is, like, now the censorship is not because of a government entity or things like that. It's because of a corporate entity, which is, has a, says for a lot sure. about where we've shifted. Yep. Yeah. Once again, capital, capitalism is, an, is a problem sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brought to you by capitalism. Yes, we're literally like. How we'd we like, yeah, stuff. we'd like to thank our sponsors for this episode. Well, by, by, by definition, if something's brought to you by something, it would be capitalism. Yes. Yeah. No, and sure. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We wouldn't yeah. have these cool Zoom things. Don't without, touch it. Oh, <laughs> Just don't, don't, don't touch well, it. Well, well, you get what I'm saying. You get, but you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. these microphones, this, the thing that we're doing this on, was the result of someone selling a product. Oh, to, sure. So yeah, I'm yeah. not like saying. Get, abolish capitalism, but it has unintended consequences. Yeah, of for course, sure. yeah, because sure. it doesn't have a soul. It doesn't have right. an yeah. art, uh, and like that's actually <laughs> to tie it back into the movie. Good uh, Age of Audio, the documentary making about the podcast industry, and it's really about audio storytelling and and tells a little bit of the history of the medium as well. Is the movie's about that tension? Uh, as we just went through, I think a lot of people who li- listen to podcasts or, or especially podcasters themselves, well, all that money rushed in. You know, mm. uh, like the last five years, you know, when interest rates were extremely low and there's a lot of free capital and capital's like, oh, this could be a, a thing. Right. Let's throw a bunch of money at it. And is that a bad thing? In some ways, yes, because a lot of people like thought, especially podcasters thought, oh, this is it. We made it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we can actually have a career and I can, you know, pay my pay my mortgage and all this stuff. Right. And it, after the companies were like, oh, there's not actually any money here. Right. They are pulled out their money. Yeah. And that's happening with uh, YouTube now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like, but but the but also now more people than ever listen to podcasts, and yeah. so more people are making them. And one of the things I remember when being younger, they were talking about the internet, like, oh, everyone will be able to do all these things. Mm-hmm. And so we're in a moment where everyone can do all these things, and there are consequences because there. But I also feel like we had been addicted to mass media, mm-hmm. which is not the way the world has existed for almost the entirety prior to it. Like right. little pockets of news would happen in little app, right. like areas. It would Anti- everyone had their Gutenberg own over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so well, let's, on that type. Well let's uh, let's let's uh so let's let's talk about the idea of the how the fat records doc went and then how this came into Age of Audio. We're past fat records. We're on to the Well I want to say audio. so what happened well I want to know how you made the transition to this new documentary basically. Yeah. So what oh, happened God, So you made fat records. <laughs> how did you transition? I, can you Say that? No. So you made so the so, fat so we made we, so we uh, we did the little screening thing. We said let's make a short. I'll do the quick version. Yeah. We were like let's make a short, but then like it snowballed and there were a lot more people interested at their time. I didn't know how to use a camera. I didn't know what ISO was. I didn't know what f stops <laughs> were. I didn't know any of that stuff. I, I I think I had interviewed those people in the. I think we all made documentaries <laughs> starting at like no, a, that's what I'm saying. a so, very ignorant point, you know. But that movie <laughs> ended up. Being on Amazon Prime, yeah. Like, so how did you, what happened? So, like, with it? so you reached out to Fat Mike and well, I, Fat we Records. We had a recording studio, as I mentioned, and we had recorded with Joey Cape one time, and yeah. so we had like a little connection. And Joey Cape from Lagwagon, Lagwagon. yeah. And he had accidentally included me on a thread, uh, accidentally, but on that thread, an email thread was like Fat Mike's email. See, that's the story I love. Yeah. <laughs> that's the story. I was accidentally given access to a yeah, human yeah. I shouldn't have access. I had to. a band and a record label, and I. Maybe could have been like, hey, Fat Mike, check out my band. But I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to like reach out unless I have a reason to. But I have it. That's good. And when I decided to do the movie, I started it. And because it was just going to be a little short about how Fat Records affected our group of friends. Right? Yeah. Like, it, so okay, cool. It was about yeah. us and how it affected us. So it wasn't like, but it tied in and I thought people would be interested sure. in that. And it was a way to learn how to do this. Mm-hmm. Right? So I do, I go to punk rock bowling. I film, I, I, I go on Twitter and ask a few people to do some, inter- Joe Sib. Yeah. Right? Because he's, he does stand up stuff as well. He, he was doing a stand up there. Common connections. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and he said, yeah. And, you know, he, I, I remember the w- video for Wax and he's like, you know, somebody who had done something in yeah. music and a few other people. And they said, yeah. So I came back and I had this little teaser that I put together and I put it out. N- never met, talked to Fat Records at all. Just, Wow, yeah. Because yeah. in my mind, it's like it's going to probably go on YouTube or I, I can use this to maybe make a movie one day. Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but then I, I got kind of weirded that I would put out this thing without letting them know. And I was like, you know, I got Fat Mike's email. Let me just email him, this to him. Yeah. 
And basically, my email was like, "Hey, I'm putting this out tomorrow. I thought you should see it." Yeah, sure. Yeah, like well, not if just, asking if permission. If it's just about how influential his record label has been, well, I, that's well, fine. Well, I what think. happened? What had happened? I heard it was, was a pretty, pretty much well, a hatchet job. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was the marketing director for this. It's a real cut job. I was the marketing director. <laughs> He's for not th- even that fat. <laughs> <laughs> You'll say that. Yeah. Uh, I, and his name's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I had done the, uh, I was uh, doing the event for, for that talent development school. Yeah. And they brought in a bunch of producers to judge these kids, like on their performance, stuff like that. And one of the producers was Ryan Green. And he had done a f- the studio with Fat Mike and also been the first five Fat Records he like engineered and produced. Right. So at that point, I had someone who was inside. Sure. But, and I didn't even know at the time till I got back from Las Vegas that that was that Ryan Green. Oh, okay. And so I had just gotten back literally like two days before and then I realized that I was, and I was the guy picking him up from the airport. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, hey, would you want to do this documentary? And he was like, yeah, sure, of course. So at that point, I had not just my friends like Joe Sib and a few other people that were kind of tangential. I had someone who was actually inside. Yeah, yeah. Right? So... Before I launched the trailer, I, I, I sent Mike the email. Like, hey, I'm going to put this out tomorrow. I thought you should see it. He, and he just emailed back, looks cool. Yeah. And so I put it out, and then it got some attention. And, and then if I found out that, like, I think end of that year, Mike, the no effects was coming to Dallas. So I emailed him. I was like, hey, you thought it looked cool. Do you want to be in it? Radio silence. And then a, two weeks before the show, I emailed him again. And I was like, would you, like, hey, would you want to It's always do this? the follow-up. Yep. That's one goes, of my tips for people. He goes, people. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. No other words. And so I show up to the show. As, by the way, when you're trying to do this kind of stuff on this level, I do feel like a lot of people basically say yes to doing things, and they're kind of like, figure it out. Like, there's, there really yeah. is. No, like, I, a, I, like not, not, in a, not in a shitty way, but it's like, I've talked to a lot of people that are higher up. They're like, yeah, I'll do this thing, and giving me no way of how to actually move forward and get yeah, it done yeah. and yeah. i just have to be like you just have to kind of shuck and jive for all the people around him like they told me this they told me i could I no, got, no, I got, that's I'm, the thing yeah. a no is so easy or silence is so much easier than saying sure because if you say sure now i gotta figure it yeah. out no then that, well no i'm saying on their part if this person figures out you said yes at this point you could have just said no right yeah, you know, yeah. if you tell me yes you could have just told me no, yeah. and I would have. I would not. You know, I wouldn't. Yeah, I just been like, yeah, yeah. Waited a while or whatever. You know, yeah. Uh, I would have backed off. Like, yeah. If someone tells me no, I'm not like, you sure? Yeah. You know. But he said sure. I show up to the show <laughs> with my camera and my other buddy that I that knew camera stuff. So he let me use the camera, and I was like, I'm not leaving until that bus drives away. Yeah, yeah, and I'll yeah. Stand in front of the bus. Yeah. Uh, you said yes. You yeah. said you were going to yeah. do this. Yeah. yeah. And so, that's what I mean. This is exactly uh, what I'm talking the, about. Talk to the manager, and he's like, well, who'd you talk to about this? Uh, I was like, Mike. He's like, eh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's ex- this is, he's like, this he has does, been my he, life. He does this a lot. He's like, yeah. he's like uh, uh, you could try. Yeah. But, and I just stuck it out and he got his interview. You, and had, was, you had your Tiananmen Square moment in front of the bus? <laughs> no. I, he, he, was, he napped, and we just stuck around. We just stayed. You, I was like, you couldn't do that today. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't stand in front of a tank. Put it on the ten percent list. Yeah, right? this, list. this is gonna be <laughs> these deleted scenes. And then, a little and much. Wait, 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 wait. What's it? <laughs> we're watching. It's it. a woman. <laughs> we're, oh, God. We're, we're watching the deleted scenes after we shot them. Brad's dressed as Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you not clear us? That? that was just behind the scenes Why footage. Why did you say no to this? No, this is what I wear normally. I, this, I dress, this is what he dresses like for the podcast. Yeah. He yeah. got to yeah. change out to his uniform. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Just outside the I've room. got an armband on <laughs> under the sweatshirt. You know, it's wokeism that won't get my movie made. <laughs> I like the idea. Brad's dress is Hitler, and so we go out in public, and he just puts a piece of duct tape over the swastika. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps the mustache. And your movie is, uh, it's a, Meet cute rom com <laughs> about Adolf Hitler in Vietnam. <laughs> so it doesn't even just make sense historically. No, he lived. Not no, 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 no not during Vietnam. No, it's 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 young Hitler <laughs> in Vietnam. It, you know, oh. it's, it's, yeah, it's, later. Yeah, it's an alternate. It's an alternate universe. Uh, what? What's the seventies one? The bad stuff. People getting shot. Vietnam. Vietnam. All oh, right. Yeah, Hitler died in nineteen forties. He, yeah, so he wouldn't Allegedly. be alive. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I, say, I say he lived. Oh, oh okay. I so say he, he lived. He would, well, he would be a, he's, a, he's old. A, an old man. So, so I guess. Yeah, that's my point. Works. That's, What's I'm old. happening? It he was lived. a real May-December romance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he lived. I mean, anyway, go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> so, you got, so how did the documentary come out? 
people. Uh, we ended up doing these puppets. Yeah, for the... They hated it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like, uh, that would be so funny. Yeah, like, yeah, everyone hated it. Sum it up like, yeah, they hated it. Uh, I mean, I wish I could say that. No, I don't. Everyone yeah. really liked it. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's good. Uh, it, like, we did these puppet reenactments yeah. in the movie. People really liked that. We did a I think 18 film festivals. We yeah, sold it was out a huge. bunch of our. It did, I did, it did really, really well. Uh, the puppets like were excellent. It turned out to be excellent marketing things. People love like yeah. come up and do that. I got flown to all kind of places and you know put up at different festivals and it was really so great. he becomes Hollywood's next it boy. That's what he kept texting me. He's yeah, yeah. Saying, I'm, he told me he asked me to change it his man, name on my phone. I believe to Hollywood's <laughs> next it boy. It person. I always put in S H A. Oh no, hold on. Then I have to backspace. backspace. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood's next it boy, and that's how I call <laughs> his him. business card. Says Hollywood's ne- and then yeah, rock and I got tour the money to I got the money. I got the money to prove it. Rock yes. and tour. Uh, <laughs> it in the italics. <laughs> and that's how I bought my first three houses. It's it's, uh, it's rock and tour, and then like parenthesis question mark parenthesis yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that you did the the puppetry in that because for reenactments because i was doing the same for my historical documentary about uh bulgaria's uh you know influence on world war ii and concentration camps and i was using <laughs> piles no! of dead puppets a lot less <laughs> none none did you know that not a single uh bulgarian uh jew was sent to the concentration camps <laughs> And this is why the movie should be made. I have a joke in my head. I'm not going to say it. It's about how puppets don't have feet and shoes. Let's move on. So... (laughs) Let's so anyway, on. so we did the, we did the movie. It it uh, it does. I'm not gonna it, do it. Does pretty well. It was on Amazon Prime for a while. Did like did, did a theatrical run in Japan and like yeah, the, the it was awesome. The whole it was whole awesome. I heard about it everywhere. It was you great. fought yeah. against the the release in Japan, right? Adamantly. Yeah. yeah. I said, don't release it in Japan. Yeah, they won't get it. Is what you said. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even though one of the bands was from there, yeah. it was one of the bigger mm-hmm. bands from Japan. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't want uh, them to overshadow the yeah, sure. importance right, of the label. Right, right, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's important is the label, right? Not the and that band. band was what Toshiba. <laughs> High standard, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toshiba does have a high standard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Quality. Uh, this episode of Fun Bearable brought to you by Toshiba. <laughs> Did you know they still make things? <laughs> Toshiba. They make a lot of things. Printers they do, yeah. They make their conglomerate. Money so it comes TVs. out, does well. Are, does you, well. are you going like right away, I want to make another doc? What's going uh, on? Not necessarily, but definitely if you make a documentary, and you may have experienced this, everyone's mm. like, I got an idea for a documentary. Oh, yeah. I got an idea. I'm oh, like, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's all. I have ideas for documentaries. Dime a dozen. Yeah. Starting a documentary. Doing docu- them? Finishing them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I tell people, yeah. like, starting a documentary, pretty easy. You sit, Get a camera and interview somebody. Mm-hmm. Finish a documentary. Mm. Infinitely hard. It's like so. How did the uh, the new Age of Audio documentary about podcasting so, come to be? Uh, this band, Wilhelm Scream. We mentioned them, I think, earlier. Yeah, yes, we? we did from New uh, Bedford, Massachusetts. I, they pitched me on a documentary, and I really like their band. I like those guys a lot. They're really good dudes. And we started talking about that because and there was an idea of them possibly doing a Patreon model for the band. Yes, for mm-hmm. fans of the band. So. Uh, but they were like, not about when we're on the road, not really about the music, but more about what our life is like when we get home and like our families and like, the, and so I thought that was interesting. Like what are the support systems it takes for, um, uh, working class creatives to exist? Which I think is really fun. I think yeah. that's sure, a really yeah. cool so idea. It's less about like them being abandoned, more like how the families and the, the employers and their community, why they can continue to exist because of this support. other people feel like it should exist. Yeah. You know? yes. And I think that that doesn't get talked about as much. Sure. Uh, you know, not that it never gets touched on, but it's never ne- the focus. Right. So I started working on that. Um, they had a show in New Bedford. In New Bedford. At the vault. No, no, no. They had a show in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. At the same night as this band Propagandy, which is one of my yeah. favorite bands. Yep. And uh, well, I was like, I'm going to go to that show. Uh, so. I plan to go, but one of the guys that's friends with the band is also in this band called Heart Sounds. It's so complicated already. And he's a lead singer. His name is Ben. Uh, and he was like, hey, you're going to go to the Propaganda show and you got these cameras. Would you film our set? Sure. And I was like, oh, great. Then I'm, you know, awesome. I was going to go to the show anyway. And then, you know, that'll be easy to get backstage access and yeah. everything because we'll have access to the show. And, uh, and I think I knew the Propaganda guys from the movie anyway. So, yeah. Uh, on the way there or before, he's like, hey, my uncle's coming to the show. I'm like, well, that's cool. Who's your? He's like, who's your uncle? He's like, my uncle's Walt Ira Glass. Walt Disney. Walt Disney. <laughs> no, my my. Uh, uh, that's just a shocking. Yes. Uh, Ira Glass is my my uncle. I was like, yeah, former Ira Glass dead is, Kennedy. Yeah. Ira Glass is going to be at a propaganda show. This yeah. is 
messed with my head and I ended up uh, hanging out with them and we talked about the movie stuff and like not just a meet and greet but had like long, hung out for like an hour yeah. and he also went to the Wilhelm show so he actually came and hung out there too and so that happened I was like that was fucking weird uh, the next couple of days I ran into the guy that was this guy um, Dallas Taylor who does this podcast called uh, 20,000 Hertz and he had done an episode a little mini uh, documentary on the Wilhelm scream, the sound. Mm. And so I was interviewing him because I wanted to talk about the sound. The actual yeah, sound yeah. of where it came from. And we knew a similar, ah! we knew a similar <laughs> podcaster that's a pretty popular one uh, uh, named Roman Mars for this yeah. podcast called 90% Invisible, which is a... Man, I want to hear Roman Mars and Ira Glass get in a fight <laughs> or have phone sex. Yes. That, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ira so you, Glass so you know Roman and Mars. Roman Mars having phone sex. Now, so, we, well, well, we can make that happen. How big is your cock? My we name can, is Roman <laughs> Mars. You, you know, we can literally make throbbing. that happen with AI now. It's like... It's your cock is throbbing happen. and I'm wet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I totally stepped all over your Roman. It's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but he likes it that way. <laughs> no, my Roman uh, Mars is this right here. I don't know. <laughs> so you've been filming it for how many years so, now? So I'm getting, I almost at the Genesis. Yeah. So I'm talking to uh, Dallas, yeah. and I tell him the story about the Ira thing. Yeah. And then he's like, he's like, dude, you know Roman Mars? And it seems like you know Ira Glass now. He's like, why aren't you making a podcast documentary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in that moment, I was like, why am I not making it? So I emailed or texted or something uh, Roman. I was like, hey, if I made a podcast documentary, would you be in it? He's like, yeah. of course. So right now, and he's somebody a lot of people know in the sure, podcast yeah, yeah. industry and was like, so then I go to South by Southwest, like I think a month or two later and run into my sales agent for Fat Rec. And he's like, what are you working on? I'm like, oh, I'm working on this thing about mid-level creative. He's like, what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I was like, well, I, I have potential this podcast documentary. I have like a, a yes from Roman. He's like, oh, and he knew who Roman was. He's like, dude, I can probably get money for that. The next day was the PRX meetup where it was like all the heads of like, um, it was like uh, Radiotopia. What's uh, PRX? PRX is a, they're a company that does distribution for podcast and radio mm. and uh, really does a, a, like, Pretty heavily in that part of podcasting. Yeah, right. we're we're on their band list. Right. Yes. Uh, B -A -N -N -E so at that meetup, it was the heads of like one of the guys, main guys from Stitcher. Yeah. One of the main uh, people from Radiotopia, and at the time, stuff you should know. Uh, the the uh, their, the network. Yeah. They got bought out by iHeart eventually, but I basically went in there and was like, "Hey, Roman said yes. I think I can get some money. Would you, you know?" And I pitched everyone, and within twenty minutes, I had they're like, "Yes, uh, here I'll connect you with this person, this person." And then a month or two later was the Radiotopia tour where they were going to be in Boston. And we, f we went ahead and grabbed some cameras, went to NAB. You guys familiar with NAB? It's uh, for the National uh, Association of Broadcasters. And okay. they have all the technology of this. Where they all this don't, 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 don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch it. I didn't touch it. Yeah, I know. But don't, don't, you know, that's close enough. I think that's close enough. Uh, so we went there and ended up running into a guy who worked for Red Camera. Yeah. And... Uh, he and he was a big fan of Fat Rec. Yeah, and it was like we were telling him what was going on. He's like, dude, I can get red cameras for free. Like, yeah. And so he's so he came out with us and we started shooting. So within that, from that time that the it was suggested to the time we were shooting was probably maybe three months. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And so like it happened really quickly because we wanted to establish that we were making the movie. And it, yeah. And there we didn't was do any happen. interviews. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't do any interviews. It was just getting B-roll of this thing that was going to happen again. You know, potentially ever. So we figured yeah. we'd go and get it. And uh, yeah, so after, after that happened, it, here we are six years later. That was 2018. So who, who have you gotten for it so far uh, in the world of podcasts? Go to the website. Because I know, I know you got, obviously you got Well, uh, people who listen to your podcast might know Mark Marin. Mark yeah. Marin. That was a recent, we just got Mark Marin a couple weeks ago. You got uh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. That was uh, 2019. We got Kevin Smith. Scott Ackerman. Uh, Scott Ackerman. Paul F. Tompkins. These are all in 2019. Um, um, Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen's in it for like maybe two minutes. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's just there because he did an impression of Ira Glass. <laughs> and, I like that. Uh, also, he doesn't listen to podcasts. Because I asked him in the interview, I was like, you like podcasts? He's like, nah, not really. I bet he loves <laughs> the Fat Rec documentary, though. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, like, I just needed him to talk about that so it would it'd be a cool, like, Yeah, gag, no, that's, you know that's fun. Oh, no, that's fun to yeah. keep uh, it in, for well, sure. Well, and I want, like, the picture you're painting is there's a lot of 
comedy people in it, but really the movie is a heavily focused on narrative driven like podcasts. Right. A lot of the comedy people are there to kind of for their historical because they were there in those er- beginnings. They were the kind of days, setting yeah. the establishing like what was going on in those early days. Kevin Smith. It's so funny because uh, you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna, uh, derail or anything like that. Please. But it, it to to, leave, I'm hearing like so minute. much uh, echo here because after Be a Man, you know, we talked about what what we were going to do next and stuff like that. What documentary we wanted to do. A lot of people were like, "Oh, Be a Man too." I'm like, "No, that was a genuine thing, and it would be disingenuous to go back to it." Uh, but one of the things I did want to do was a podcast about, uh, sorry, a, a documentary about podcasts, but focused more in the comedy realm. And you yeah. Should. And uh, so I was talking with my uh, producing partner about going down that road, and we. Kind of went pretty far with it, but then uh, another documentary that was uh, announced. They had a website as well. Wow, uh, <laughs> that's what you do. That's how yeah, you yeah, yeah. plant the flag. And it was focused on the comedy aspect of it, mm. and uh, I think it was called Ear Buddies or something Ear like buds. that. They raised like Ear Buds, yeah. Ear, right. Okay. So what happened? Because I, I looked at this at the same yeah. time, and I was like, okay, nothing. nothing. And here. it kills me because we stopped because oh, okay, that's happening. Uh, and they're already much further down the line with this, so we stopped doing it, and then nothing happened. With well, them. here's what I'll say. Hit me. Give me the uh, give me uh, the but, soapy soapy well, dish. <laughs> well, one one is That's great. Like our movie exists in a world post serial where like the very sure big, yeah yeah the very beginning of their movie they're like people are like what's a podcast and no one knows. but like we're yeah. show, we're kind of in this. Like, sure, sure. I, so, I, I was only focused on like, oh, comedians are going into so this space and f- exploring movie. that, right? You've yeah. seen the movie? Uh, of course. I did, I did research. There's actually a, another podcast documentary that takes place in this, like, it's very localized in this part of Florida about like very early days of podcasting. And, and sure. it's mostly in this little group. And it's like on like taped cameras, probably. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like very, like, so the production quality of, is, is, you know, appropriate for the time. Yeah. Uh, earbuds, and I don't. I, I know those guys. One thing is, I'm not a podcaster, mm-hmm. right? I don't, I don't do podcasts per se. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah, yeah, podcast yeah. and that kind of thing. But I don't. I'm not in. I'm not in it. Yeah, right. The thing with earbuds, which and I thought they had a decent concept. Um, they had some major, uh, like our the kind of films we do. We try to try to make them cinematic. So there's a big sure yeah uh, push about like. Cinema, cinema, you know, framing how things are shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's really there's a big cinematic aspect to it. And earbuds. You had Iro Glass wear squibs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we took them out. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You should see the reenactment. So this is a funny yeah. reenactment. Yeah, because he's I'm I. <laughs> yeah, they're going off. It was crazy. <laughs> earbuds. I thought, and I like nothing against those guys, but I I just don't like when the people put themselves in a, in the movie. My I hate personal. it. I can't stand it. And Any so, documentary that puts the... Uh, the, the you, know, you, did? you did? It? Very much so. Uh, yeah, he's the keys of star. Well, to be clear, Be a Man is a, like a journey documentary. Yeah, it's a, it's, Does that make sense? No, no but this yeah, it's saying. about yeah. the band yeah. they, journey. And, and with yeah. their conceit, their conceit, and they raised a lot more money than we were able to. Yeah. Um, was that they're going to go visit the fans of their podcast. So that's a little bit more. Specific. Oh yeah, so, yeah. That's a so, that's a different thing. Like the so, the so documentary like, so, I was envisioning was and, like there, straight interview kind of there stuff. There is yeah. an interview with uh, Chris Hardwick in a studio, and it sounds horrible. Mm. Yeah, like yeah, there yeah. wasn't a real focus on good quality sound. Right, the right. Like they, they Joe Rogan's in it, but they like got him coming out of a back of a club There's yeah like yeah no yeah, yeah. lights yes oh, like, no, I yeah i saw that footage and it drove me crazy and, and, yeah and, and so like there's a lot of really big names in it. like the guy yeah. with the guy from freakonomics is in it mm. um like there's a like, he had they but when i watched it i was like one like i said the time period is it's like it, i haven't explained what a podcast is yeah and what which were kind of doing a little bit but we're like i talked to the guy that coined the term podcast mm-hmm. i talked to adam curry about like inventing the medium in a way, the technical side of it. Right, I mean, if you right. Know that about Adam Curry, he like went to Dave Weiner, the guy who invented RSS, mm-hmm. which we explained in the movie, mm. uh, and was like, "Hey, can you make? Can you tie this to audio?" And so, like in that moment, you had, you know, 
wide distribution of you know digital audio right which so we talked to him you know we talked to yeah 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 it's very like it's a different focus that's the thing with stuff like this is there are so many ways you can tell what what the story that you want to tell uh you can have a talking head dominated documentary you can have a the filmmaker is going on this journey you can have a more uh I guess disingenuous kind of I want to insert myself kind of version to it, yeah. right? I, I, Things I insert like that. Myself, like way I see it for me, I insert myself in a much different way because, mm. like, um, in the making of the thing is what and the the things that I'm choosing yeah. to focus on. Uh, like I said, this has a little bit of comedy because I thought it was important to acknowledge that, but really the focus is on audio storytelling, right? Right, yeah. and uh, at, 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 like not in in podcasting being the medium that allowed it you know to flourish again right and that's why the movie's called age of audio because uh we were trying to figure out a name for the movie we had a bunch and of ultron really, was taken really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> but every all these articles were written like oh it's the golden age of audio mm, the yeah. gold, uh, like uh, golden age of audio is like and i was in my car one day i was like it's not the golden age of audio like we had like the 30s from your favorite yeah. punk rock time period yeah hell yeah uh, like Hell yeah. That's when everything was audio. People sat around, like, that's the golden age of audio. I was like, we're more in just another age of audio. And I was like, ah. Nice. Yeah. It's an age of audio. And because it really ties back to, like, the, the oldest form of storytelling is what we're doing, you know, talking to each other. Yeah. And podcasting, I think, just allowed that to happen at a scale and individualized. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, it created this new kind of thing. And so, but which is an old thing. It's a new yeah. You know, nothing's new anymore. Yeah. I rem- so. I just remembered my favorite band from that era. Oh, good. I thought you we were would. Talking about. I that. thought yeah. giving yeah. some time to you would. Yeah, make you, I just remembered your, when you brought it back memory. up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cobble Stompers. Uh, they were, <laughs> <laughs> uh, killer band. Killer yeah. band. They're Cobble great. Stompers. They're great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I know Sean has to go. Yeah. I so so we're 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 so where are we're, you right now? <laughs> so where Both. are you right now with the doc? Let's leave on that. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we're we, six years in. We've done, uh, I think, almost 70 interviews at this point. We've got a lot of big names uh, like in that space. Um, we have, uh, like, there's an hour and 26 minute cut of the movie right now. Yeah. Uh, that's all mostly historical. So mm. we've, we've mm. been working to fill in the mm. part where you need a person th- to follow. And so uh, we found a podcaster that's kind of oh. in it, that kind of exists. He's an independent <laughs> podcaster. Chuck thought Shots it was going like to be him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Uh, if you heard my tiny. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that what you call it? <laughs> Is is that the direct translation from, the, you know, the petite mort, my yeah. tiny O? <laughs> so you found this guy, uh, yeah. And we had other subjects that came in and dropped out over time, and it's yeah. you know, it's been yeah, it's, it's morphed and changed as documents. You had OJ, you had OJ for a while. Yeah, he died, and yeah. like, I know because he was going to start a podcast, and you were following kind of the, I mean, the rise of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and not and not not his controversy, just like the personal journey. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> you were going to do like we aren't going to even bring it up. You're like you're like there's one. No, no, we we're going to not yeah. acknowledge it at all. Yeah. We're going to cover his entire life minus one day. And the lower <laughs> third. Well, and a few days yeah, afterwards, yeah. Yeah. I would say. And the lower third does say, uh, I saw the rough cut. The lower third does say. <laughs> I saw the rough cut. From Naked Gun. And yeah. that's all it says. No, that's it's his, from yeah, Naked that's Gun. Credit. That's yeah. credit. Uh, in fact, in the marketing, that's what we put from. Yeah. <laughs> friend uh, of Leslie Nielsen. Yes. Friend, I also friend. like the prohibitionists. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> So like we 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 like you can see things. We have like some yeah. teaser stuff out there, so you can see some of the stuff. Do you have uh, a website or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's so funny to do marketing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, like, wait, what? Be- you got a name for your project? <laughs> <laughs> Loser. No, 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 we're not making fun of you having the website. It's no. just, it, yeah, no, we're making fun of saying no. that. We're not A-way, belittling. There's A-way no movie. belittling. No, so you, you, anyway, tell us about your little movie. <laughs> A little movie. So, did you? Uh, you guys were doing crowdfunding. We did, but it didn't work out. Okay. Is it the still? Way is I this, I can people still donate or no? Uh, uh, like, how much well, do you owe the crowd? <laughs> well, we raised uh, several thousand dollars, but not nearly what we wanted to. But, mm. um, but uh, because of that output of attention and just right. all the different stuff we put out, we gained a lot of attention from like a bunch of different people, like NPR basically begged us to be in the movie. Like, they're like, hey, you should include NPR. We were at the beginning of podcasting. Yeah. He's like, well, the CCO is emailing me. I guess we hit something. Um, you should big time him. 
You should write back and be like, yeah, sure. if we need a tiny desk, we'll get back to you. <laughs> I met the guy who does that. He's really nice. Uh, well, what I'll say is that I didn't respond right away. It took me a week to respond. And I got yeah. an email from like their marketing company, CEO yeah. of them, was like, hey, I, I, don't, I think you should probably include like NPR. And he was like, dude, I'm, I'm going to. Mm-hmm. I'm, chill out. So, <laughs> so even good. though the crowdfunding You should didn't send them out. a tote bag. But then we also, <laughs> it, hasn't, it hasn't been officially announced. And we're probably going to do a thing around Tribeca, like a more official announcement. But uh, this uh, co-production company came in and was interested in the project and was willing to put up the money that I needed. So it did end and, up working out, basically. Oh, it did. It, it totally yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, That's and great. It, That's that awesome. That was the goal. And, um, and in addition, there was like, you know, we raised like six grand, which allowed us to do a, a, another trip. Yeah. So like it all, it all feeds. I got a Austin Film Society grant that, for like 10 grand. So it's all like... That's great, man. That's all fucking awesome. This, this is... Because this is... Like, the reason I wanted to have you on, because this is like a real dude who's like... Kind of in the same world of us, where it's like actual grinding to make actual good yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's it's kind of more of a picture. It's funny because you were talking about the idea of focusing on blue collar creatives, just making it work. And it's kind of like that's the fucking brand. No, that's and even with the podcast thing, like, like our, that's the, sub, people, the subject that we're doing is in the same kind of financial situations I'm in because a yeah, big part of it is yeah, the, it's the great. finance side of it. And it's that's what I'm saying. I'm in not intentionally where I was like, this guy is like me. Yeah. you know, it's just, it just ends up being yeah. that way. Like the the support system with the with the Wilhelm scream guys. Like yeah. I think about like not just me, but all my friends and how you're how my you know wife would have to stay home with the kiddo while I'm yeah, gone for a month, yeah, going right. to you know do this thing, and that yep. that's couldn't necessarily be done if she wasn't willing or you know or if a parent can't watch somebody or or sometimes lend money if you know because for sure not you know a lot of artists is not sometimes not a lot of money yeah, or of there course. are peaks and valleys to where you're like hey i have i did some freelance work and they owe me but they're on a, a 60 day mm-hmm. and i have this bill due now so i have the money but i don't have the money you totally know? totally so it's like that life of a creative and you know, well, that's awesome. I'm, I love that it's moving forward. I love that you're getting more support for it, and that you that's think you're in the final final yeah, the leg the, of the race. That's how it happened with the fat wreck. That you start alone, yeah, and you get the train going, and some pe- more people jump on the train. The train gets a little faster, and yeah, it gets a little faster, and then toward the end, there's no, the like people like, oh, it's almost done. I'll jump in. I was just reminiscing with Derek Furtado, a uh, comic yeah. friend of the show, um, yeah. uh, who who did uh, be a man with me, yeah, and we last night we were just talking about like. That that process of you know people help those helping themselves and like yeah they get they see this thing chugging along and want to be involved you people know people who yeah. are really talented yeah. and make a lot of money at doing like commercial stuff because I found this they were really talented but they're usually doing work and they're working with clients that mm-hmm. are tough and and then so- something like this comes along and I'm like they're like how can I help you and I'm like please. You're like, well, what do you want me to do? I was like, do your thing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Do yeah. what you do. You're yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, I'm not going to tell exactly. you how to do it. I mean, this is what I need, but like, yeah, yeah. you do it. So I'm not going to nitpick everything you're doing or prove everything. Like, you get to make what you want to make. I right. like what you make, or I wouldn't ask you to do it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I, so like, I've had that experience with the puppets. Like, I like I did not dictate how they needed to look. I said, I need them to read on screen. I need them to be, so they need to be pretty big. And then logistically, I need the second set of puppets to have transferable heads so we can get more people without having to build more puppets. Right, right. right. But you design them, and I'm not telling you how to do any of that. And yeah. then made these amazing things yeah, that yeah, are now in incredible. this uh, punk rock museum. Now yeah. they're in the, the punk museum. rock museum. Yeah. Yeah. And Vegas see, this is my issue. I, I did the same with my puppets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I wish I had kind of put some checks and balances within yeah. that. Yeah. Because given the context of the situation... Bulgaria. Bulgaria, Holocaust... <laughs> Etc. The puppets come in. It's it's crunch time. They were. I'm just gonna tell you. I'll I'll say what legally they were described as. Yes, please. Silly. And that's <laughs> not the tone you want. Yeah. It's the wrong tone. No, I'm. I'm I think generally. Speaking, <laughs> that's great. You're gonna have a tough time with puppets with, with serious subject matter yeah. I think I would disagree with yeah, that I, I, wholeheartedly and I think the art form itself we would need, disagree we with need you the Muppets version of Schindler's List and now see here's the Ugh. problem you just brought up Muppets no, 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 not no. puppets no 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 I'm... don't touch me a Muppet <laughs> is not a puppet <laughs> A puppet can be a Muppet, but a Muppet is not always a puppet. Well, we did, we did punk rock Muppets, which okay. we called yeah, yeah, yeah. puppets. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> ah, or monks. Well, that's awesome, Wait. man. And we'll, and we'll, 
And you keep keep in touch with me too, because we'll keep no, the audience informed. I'm never done talking to you again. <laughs> we're, we're gonna. You think we're, I got treated here? Yeah, we're gonna keep the audience informed about how the movie's going. I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Not you, him. Oh, okay. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna be. Uh, <laughs> you get it. I'm gonna be in the credits. So. Yeah, he helped, uh, he helped film uh, an interview. Uh, I did. It, you'll, you'll recognize it. It's the one out of focus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the one where you keep seeing I Chuck mean, I technically slowly DP'd creeping it, so into the <laughs> corner of the frame. <laughs> I, I know. I filmed this. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the background. <laughs> it goes boop. And I come back, hey, everybody, I'm Chuck. And I filmed, action. I filmed one shot in this documentary. <laughs> You're about to experience it. <laughs> Sit down in your seats if you're not already sitting down. <laughs> we'll yeah, man. Your butts. So I'm, gl- I'm glad that that's going forward. I'm glad that you're coming to an end on that thing, and I'm really glad you were able to come on today, yeah, man. Because yeah, it's too. like, it's yeah, like we didn't for, know. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, thanks you I for being I mean, here. some of you. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate most of you. Yeah, yes. I think so. two thirds. That's fine. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll. I don't, we'll I don't appreciate his left hand. That's fine. It's oh, it doesn't exist. It's for your upper shoulder. Yeah, I don't appreciate that. It's my worst hand. Do me now. <laughs> that left eyebrow, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't Seriously, appreciate yeah. it. No, no it's appreciation. A birthmark. It's all fucked up. I appreciate yeah. most of you, though. Yeah. Um, That's fair. Thank you, Sean Cologne, for being here. Thank you to our fun bears for watching and or listening. We appreciate it. If you want to hit us up uh, on socials at FunBearablePod or through email at uh, FunBearablePod at gmail.com. Always happy to hear from y'all. For Ray Harrington and Chuck Staten and Sean, the next Hollywood it boy Cologne. <laughs> He's got a website. <laughs> Hollywood's dead. This is not great. You know what? Hollywood's honest, dying. Honest, right? So on his business card, it's it's Sean Cologne. The next Hollywood it boy is bold. Then raconteur, italics, and then at the bottom in quotations, I've got a website. But doesn't have a website. No website website is listed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you can can figure it out, you can check out the movie. Saying thank you so much, and we're sorry for being fun bearable. Now this website, how did you go about getting? (laughs) 